please, 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 please. The hero and the princess. You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. Turn around and leave. Seriously? You're just going to turn around and leave? Do you even know where you're going? Quietly continue down the path, away from the cabin. Fine. I suppose you just quietly continue down the path away from the cabin. Good. What we're being asked to do here is wrong. Better to wash our hands of this whole situation than to take part in it. Ignore that annoying little voice. He doesn't know what he's talking about. That's strange. It looks like this path also leads to the cabin. How convenient. Everything's back on track again. Maybe the world can still be saved after all. Turn around again and leave again. You're really keen on wasting everyone's time, aren't you? It's remarkably selfish, if you ask me. I've already outlined the stakes of the situation. If you don't do your job, everyone dies. Like, dies, dies. Forever. Quietly continue down the path. Your silence is deafening. But fine. You turn around and trek back down the path you came. Oh, would you look at that? You're at the cabin again. Now, I'm not normally one for superstition or astrology, but I have to say, it seems like the universe itself is doing its best to bring you to your fated confrontation with the princess. Oh yeah? Well, I guess I'm going to start walking in a different direction. Again. In fact, I'm going to keep trekking through the wilderness until I find a way out of this place. There's always a choice. Let me tell you right now that you're making the wrong one for pretty much everyone who has ever lived, as well as for everyone who ever will. And here we go. As you trudge into the woods, something strange starts to happen. At first, it's little flickers out of the corner of your eyes. Glimpses of familiar wooden structures through the leaves. But as you focus on your surroundings, you start to realize that those flickers weren't just a trick of light. Huh? In every direction, there is a path and a cabin. And not just a cabin, the cabin. An infinite fractal of paths and cabins desperately trying to draw you back to where you need to be. Wait, what's going on? But you're too stubborn for that, aren't you? It doesn't matter how many paths or cabins appear around you, you're just going to do whatever you can to shirk your responsibility because you care more about irritating me than you do about the fate of the world. You've doomed us all, you know that, right? But of course you do. Otherwise you wouldn't just wander off into the forest in search of certain death. You lose track of just how long you spend aimlessly tromping through the wilderness, but it's not like any of that time spent lost in the woods really matters, because it isn't long before the world ends and everyone dies. The Stranger. Alright. You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. You aren't kidding. She actually ended the world last time, didn't she? What the hell is she? Last time? Last I checked, there wasn't any last time. We've just met you and I. If he doesn't remember what happened, then maybe it's best to keep it that way. I don't know. I think it's more fun if he knows what we're thinking. He's like a captive audience. The entire world ending wasn't enough to get rid of us. I don't think there's much he can do other than object. I wonder what else we can do to ruin his day. If by ruining my day, you mean ruining everyone's day forever, then yes, I suppose there are plenty of ways you could pull that off. The world really did end last time, didn't it? We should be careful. For all we know, we just got lucky. 
The world hasn't ended yet. And you are never going to slay her with that attitude. Stuff those pathetic little voices to the back of your mind and stay focused on the task ahead. These walls weren't here last time. You can't force me to go to the cabin. What are you talking about? I'm sure those walls have always been there. It makes sense if you think about it. If there weren't any walls in the woods, someone might have gotten lost. Or, heaven forbid, someone other than you might have stumbled onto the princess. Yeah, yeah, I get it. I'm going to the cabin. A warning before you go any further. She will lie, she will cheat, and she will do everything in her power to stop you from slaying her. Don't believe a word she says. If we're stuck going in there, maybe we should believe her. Maybe she isn't a liar. Ignore him. He's just being difficult for the sake of it. Let's keep an open mind. The cabin interior is wrong. A confusing patchwork of many cabin interiors, all projected across what's almost the same space. But it's all shifted. An inch here, a foot there such that the seams are never quite visible enough for the place to make any sense. The only furniture of note is a plain table, its legs all the wrong lengths, its material devoid of feature. Perched on that table is a pristine blade. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. If he wants us to take it, maybe we should just leave it to collect dust, or better yet, Grab it and throw it out the window. What good is a knife against a world-ending monstrosity anyway? I like it. No, we're taking the knife. <sighs> have you seen this place? We have literally no idea what to expect and no idea what we're dealing with. I've already told you what you're dealing with. You're dealing with a princess. How many times do I have to explain this incredibly simple and straightforward premise? You can't just say that, but when everything here is so wrong. Listen to me. My job is to describe facts as facts and to guide you through your job, which is to slay the princess and through that action, save the entire world. And if you're going to slay her, you cannot let fear creep into your heart. You cannot lose yourself before you even get to her. Oh, ho, ho, ho. you've piqued my interest. What's going to happen if we lose ourselves? Nothing, because you're going to pull yourself together. Just ignore the stressful geometry and stay calm. How? Even if we closed our eyes, you're constantly describing it to us. I'm not going to stop doing my job, so you're just going to have to get better at yours. And quickly, if you don't mind. Yes, take a deep breath. I'm all for getting under his skin, but we'll miss out on loads of fun if we shrivel up into a ball and go insane the first time we see something weird. What you're seeing here is obviously real. Just accept it and go with the flow. It really isn't hard. Okay. Okay, I'm fine. Good. Now, whenever you're ready, we're all waiting for you to complete a very important task. We're not taking the blade. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing a web of branching staircases all built from unidentifiable materials. Nothing here seems to belong, and the closer you examine your surroundings, the more confused you get, your head throbbing with the effort of making sense of this place. None of the stairs even seem to go anywhere, let alone down. The air here has a sickening, almost sludge-like miasma to it, a kind of indiscernible quality that comes from the blending together of every scent there is at once, an odour that is simultaneously everything and yet the sum of it all coalescing into a thick, nauseating nothing. If the princess lives here, slaying her is probably doing her a favour. Her voice, a disquieting collage of tone and personality, drags up the stairs. Hello? Hi. What are you doing here? Are you here to kill? No. No, no thank you. Oh, don't be such a baby. I don't want to do this. Let's just turn around and leave. This feels wrong. This feels like a trap. Like whatever we do, we're gonna die. 
we don't even have a weapon. But we already tried turning around and leaving, didn't we? And he threw up a wall. No way to go but forward. And whatever choice we make, whatever she is, we know one thing for sure. And what's that? That the fate of the world hinges on your success? There'll still be plenty of ways to ruin his day. Take the center staircase. You step onto the center staircase. Paths wind out around you in all directions, each step branching into its own staircases, which branch into their own staircases, and so on. You aren't quite sure if yours is taking you up or down, but at the very least, it's taking you somewhere. You concentrate on where you are, careful not to stray onto any of the many splitting branches that tempt you on all sides. You wouldn't want to have to backtrack to yours once you'd made a decision that took you someplace else. And so you take one careful, focused step after another. One foot down, another foot down, another after that. You lose yourself in following the correct pattern, in following what looks to be the true path, the one that cuts straight down, or up, or maybe sideways. But no matter the direction it goes, it certainly is the most true path. You know that much. You slowly lose sense of yourself the further you go. Time disappears, and you can feel yourself begin to untether. Physical sensations dull and then vanish, until the only things experienced are the endless repeating patterns and emotions of the journey, a continuous march forward to a destination long forgotten. That's so bright. Consumption and betrayal. Skepticism and blind devotion, rivalry and submission, terror and longing, pain and unfamiliarity. And at the heart of it all, an emotion that can only be described as... Can I help you? What... what the hell was that? What happened to us? I feel so strange. Like I'm fundamentally different, but also still the same person I was at the top of the stairs. Oh well, that was a trip, but now it's over. Time to get back to our old devilish ways. The princess, eyes bright but otherwise shrouded in darkness, watches you impatiently from the other side of the basement. Don't forget why you're here. And uh, why are we here again? In case you weren't listening, I'm afraid I lost myself on the way down. <sighs> you're here to- he's just being an ass, we remember. Though I'm still not sure if we should trust you. Let's talk to her for a bit, try and get our bearings. She seems normal. Getting down here was weird. Like I was pulled apart and put back together again. Do you know what happened to me? I don't remember what it was like before I was in this place. Why would I know what happened to you? Probably stuck down here forever, aren't we? There's no way out, and barely a way in. As the princess speaks again, it's almost as if she fractures. And where there was once just one of her, there is now another. We can do that? I don't like this. It's those cabins all over again. Can, can we put her back? You said you'd been here before, right? What exactly happened last time? Does it matter? Yes, it matters. But I'm not going to waste any more time prying out details if you're going to be so irritating about it. It seems to me like you saw something you weren't supposed to have seen. If only you'd listened to whatever words of wisdom you were given in that other reality. But what's done is done, isn't it? Whatever you saw last time, unsee it. Whatever thoughts weaseled their way into your head, unthink them. If it's not already too late. You have a job to do here, and you need to do it now. Ooh, new plan. Let's see if we can make even more of her. There's more of you now? There must be something wrong with you. I'm the same as I was a moment ago. I don't feel like I've gotten any bigger. <laughs> and what's that supposed to mean? Are you trying to get under my skin? She fractures again. 
I don't like where this is going. Neither do I. Which is why you need to slay her now before things get more complicated than they already are. How would we even do that? Where would we start? We could always start by retrieving the blade. Can we even leave this place? I don't like thinking about what might happen to us if we have to go back through those stairs. Well, that's where the blade is. If you want it, you'll have to go and get it. I don't think we're going to be able to put her back. Kind of hurts to think about it, doesn't it? It's like everything we say just multiplies her. It certainly looks that way, so please, for the love of everything, stop asking her questions and stop stalling. You're obviously just making things worse. What's your name? Princess. You can address me as your royal highness, or her majesty. Any honorific should do, really. It doesn't matter. I've been down here for so long. What's the point of a name if there's no one around to use it? None of them have names. How astute. I told you she was untrustworthy. For all I know, you're locked up down here for a reason. Do you know why you're down here? Is this a quiz? If you're here, then surely you know why I'm here. But you know, right? You have to know. You're the only other person I've ever seen. Or at least the only one I can remember. Don't give me false hope. Please just end this already. One way or another, just do it. <laughs> Don't be coy, we both know why I'm locked away here. I'm a monster, and the second I get out of this place, I'm, I'm going, going to end, end the entire, entire world. Okay, this was fun for a bit, but we can't even really interact with her, can we? What's the point of asking questions if all we're going to get is a million answers? Can't even follow what's going on anymore. We need to get out of here. This whole place is making me itch. I don't know what you are, but I can't trust you. I can't trust anything here. Leave her in the basement. Wait, that's not right. Go on. Take a step forward. Your foot lands, but it lands different. You experience a firm footfall, a gentle tread, a confident stride. You can feel yourself rupture. The room spins, your perception multiplying in a sickening kaleidoscope as your very self is pulled in incomprehensibly many directions. You find the blade suddenly in your hands. All at once you use it to strike at her bindings as you remain upstairs and slay her and leave her to languish alone. Is this what the end of the world looks like? What an unbearable mess. But this... We, we can't... Do you not have anything witty to say? I could use a good bit of wit right now. No, I don't, because this isn't fun. How are we supposed to have fun if everything is happening at the same time? It's the same as nothing happening, and nothing is excruciating. Luckily for all of us, nothing and everything doesn't go on forever. The world and the princess collapse in on themselves before it all... ...falls apart? I think he's gone. We were never going to salvage this, were we? What happened to us? us? What are we? What are we? There, there are parts, parts of us that are dead, and, and the others, others, and the others they just, just don't fit. fit. They just don't fit. We, we can, can feel, feel them moving, moving around, around in spaces they, they don't belong. belong. It's, it's all, all so, so uncomfortable. uncomfortable. Did you do this? Did, Did we, we do this? this? Can, can, can you pull, can us, you back pull us back apart? Can you fix us? Can you fix us? We should help her. I think we did this. How surprisingly sincere. I didn't actually think our actions had consequences. It's a little late for regret, isn't it? Please, please, please. please. I'll do my best. But you know, if she had the chance to hear your reply, she's gone. She's gone? Where did she go? Should we try and find her? Is that a... Why is it here? Why now? I think I'm supposed to look at the mirror. There's something dreadful about it. 
I, I don't think you should. No, <laughs> don't do that. The narrator is gone. He is. Does that mean the world ended? Again, what the hell are we supposed to do? Approach the mirror. I'm begging you, don't do this. Ignore him. You approach the mirror. Gaze into your reflection. Silence as you reach forward. They're gone, but the mirror remains. It's time for you to see what's in it. It's you. You are alone in this place, in a place that is empty. It is quiet here. Approach her. Something finds me in the long quiet and brings me the gift of a fragile vessel. Let her out of there. I'm sorry. There are some changes that can never be undone. There are some tears that can never be unshed. This is not a place that can hold a fragment of a concept. The moment she arrived here, she was going to return to me. I promise that it doesn't hurt. Are you the princess? She is part of me, and part of me is her. But were you always the princess, or are you just making her a part of yourself? You speak in circles. Does it matter where one thing begins and another ends? The gift of a fragile vessel? Yes. Nerves and fibers to feel the world's beyond. Perspectives to make my own. These ones are a contradiction. A winding kaleidoscope of paths and walls. They are stretched into a shape not unlike me, but it is a shape they cannot hold. I am sorry that you met this vessel so early in your journey, but they will make for a rich and vibrant heart. Do not mourn them, for they will finally get to know themselves. What happens now? Nothing, as we are. But I know that there are worlds beyond us, and that we are meant to reach them. There is no exit, but this vessel is a creature of perception. She can make you forget, if only you believe her to be able to. Bring me more perspectives, so that I may be whole, and perhaps then we will know our freedom. Okay, make me forget. She asks that I tell you to remember her. You won't. Everything goes dark and you die. <laughs> the hero and the princess. You're on a path in the woods. And at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. The end of the world? What are you talking about? I'm talking about the end of everything as we know it. No more birds, no more trees, and perhaps most problematically of all, no more people. You have to put an end to her. But how can a princess locked away in a basement end the world? Don't linger on the specifics. You have a job to do here. Just get in there and do what needs to be done. We're all counting on you. Look, I'll go to the cabin, and I'll talk to her. And if she's as bad as you say she is, then maybe I'll slay. But I'm not committing to anything until I've had the chance to meet her face to face. Then I guess we'll just have to see what happens. But, a word of warning. If you go in prepared to hear her out, she could easily trap you in her web of lies. And the more you listen to her honeyed words, the harder it'll be to pull yourself out. Then each and every one of us is doomed. So sure, go. Talk to her. See how that turns out for all of us. 
you make your way up the short path to the cabin. You'll find the princess within. The interior of the cabin is almost entirely bare. The air is stale and musty, and the floor and walls are painted in a fine layer of dust. The only furniture of note is a plain wooden table. Perched on that table is a pristine blade. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. Enter the basement without the knife. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing a staircase faintly illuminated by an unseen light in the room below. This is an oppressive place. The air feels heavy and damp, a hint of rot filtering from the ancient wood. If the princess really lives here, slaying her is probably doing her a favor. Her voice softly carries up the stairs. Hello? Is someone there? Is hypnotizing. It's the kind of voice you only have to hear once to remember it for the rest of your life. Don't let it fool you. It's all part of the manipulation. You're playing a dangerous game by coming here unarmed. I'm here to save you. How many times do I have to tell you how dangerous letting her out of here would be before it finally sinks in? Wait, really? You're here to rescue me? I, I was starting to think I'd be stuck down here forever. Come downstairs. I want to see the face of my rescuer. You walk down the stairs and lock eyes with the princess. There's a heavy chain around her wrist, binding her to the far wall of the basement. She's beautiful. How could someone like this be a threat to anyone? I am begging you to stay focused. There's a lot riding on you here. Hi. I can't believe you're here. I've been waiting for something like this to happen forever. I hope you brought something to deal with these chains. Don't do it. If she gets out of those chains, we're all one step closer to the end. I'll see what I can do. Examine the chains. You're only making this more difficult. Thank you. Thank you. You're making a huge mistake. No, you're doing the right thing. You walk up to the chains binding the princess to the wall and give them a tug. They're large and heavy far too solid for you to even imagine trying to break them apart. I'm guessing you don't have the key? Maybe it's somewhere upstairs. Doubtful. Whoever locked the princess away down here intended for her to never see the light of day. They wouldn't have just left the key to her chains somewhere in the cabin. I'm gonna check upstairs. Maybe the key still lying around somewhere up there. And if not, maybe I can at least find something to break free. Okay. I'll be here. Good luck. You attempt to make your way out of the basement, but the door at the top of the stairs slams shut. You hear the click of a lock sliding into place. Is someone else here? Hey, let me out of here. Your shouts and pleas are met with silence. I'll repeat myself once again. You're here to slay the princess, and you won't leave until the task is done. Return to the bottom of the stairs. You make your way to the bottom of the stairs. This would have been so much easier if you'd just taken the blade like you were supposed to. Easier for whom? Easier for everyone. Look at the mess you're in. I heard the door slam. They locked you down here too, didn't they? There's a slight panic rising in the princess's voice. If I could just get out of these chains, I know we could force our way out of here together. 
She barely hesitates before raising her arm to her mouth, her teeth tearing through her limb with the determination of a trapped wolf. As she rips her flesh from her bone, a sound comes from behind you, the clang of bouncing metal. It's the blade from upstairs. You're not sure how it made its way down here, but if there's a time to strike, it's now. Or we could use it to free her. You won't like what happens if you do that. Save the princess. <sighs> Fine. Against your better judgment, you place the blade against the ragged, self-inflicted wound on the princess's arm, just above the unyielding chain binding her to this place. You cut into her flesh. The blade is sharp, and it takes little effort to crack through the bone of her arm. Her limb falls to the ground, and the heavy chains follow suit. She didn't so much as utter a sound through the whole ordeal. No, she didn't. She smiles softly as her gaze meets yours, blood from her wounded arm dripping rhythmically to the ground. How is she still smiling after everything? It's like she isn't even bothered by what just happened. Thank you. Now let's get out of here. Approach the locked door. No, we won't have any of that. The stakes are too high. You can't just let her escape into the world. No, I can't just let her escape into the world. As the princess approaches the bottom stair, your body steps forward and raises the blade. Wait, this isn't fair. You can't just do that. Watch me. What are you doing? Slay the princess, slay the princess, slay the princess, warn her. Uh, we're just, we're gonna let the narrator do it. Okay, there's no going back now. I'm with you to the end. You bring the blade down to strike at the princess's heart. But she's fast. She ducks to the floor, your blade narrowly grazing her backside. Slaying her won't be easy now that she's free. We could have gotten out of here together. Were you just lying to me this whole time? I don't know what's come over you, but if I have to kill you, then I'll kill you. Do you think I need both of my arms to do that? She pounces on you with the same animal ferocity she used to tear through her arm. But you have a weapon. You raise the blade, digging it under her ribs, aiming directly for the heart. It's not enough to stop her. You feel her claws in your throat, then her teeth, somehow sharp enough to pull apart your flesh and sinew with ease. You collapse to the floor, your body unresponsive as your blood pools on the ground beneath you. She stares down at your ravaged form, eyes shining in the darkness, dress stained in red as her blood and yours both seep into the fabric. If we're lucky, the wound you managed to inflict will be enough to at least delay her escape from this place. If we're very lucky, it will kill her before she can reach the outside world. It can't just end like this, right? As much as I'd prefer for things to have gone differently, I can't deny the reality of what's happened. I'm sorry, but it's over. Everything goes dark, and you die. Chapter 2, The Witch You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. Wait, hasn't this already happened? It hasn't. Or, if it has, I certainly haven't been a part of it. We've just met for the first time, you and I. If he doesn't remember what happened, then maybe it's best to keep it that way. Brilliant. We need to keep our cards close to our chest, and I'm not sure we can trust him. 
You know I can hear you, right? It's going to be a lot harder than you think to keep secrets from me. Did I say I'm not sure we can trust him? <laughs> Slip of the tongue, bit of the old brain fog. I meant to say that we should probably head over to the cabin and slay that princess. We already know we can't trust her, so let's get on with the show. Let's turn around and leave. Turn around and leave. Well, you're the boss. Seriously? You're just going to turn around and leave? Do you even know where you're going? Nope. Fine. I suppose you just quietly continue down the path away from the cabin. That's strange. It looks like this path also leads to the cabin. How convenient. Everything's back on track again. Maybe the world can still be saved after all. Okay, okay, I'm going into the cabin. Sheesh. That's great to hear. As long as you bring that fiery attitude to princess slaying, I think this will all resolve splendidly. This is probably for the best. The interior of the cabin is a mess of twisted roots, the walls a chaotic weave of knotted wood that, almost as if by accident, just happened to resemble a room. The floor is damp and earthy, and the only furniture of note is a slab of mud in the shape of a shelf, with a pristine blade perched on its edge. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. You didn't say anything about the mirror on the wall. That's because there isn't a mirror. There's the muddy shelf, the blade sitting on the muddy shelf, and the door to the basement. There's nothing else in here. There's definitely a mirror. But he says there isn't one. That's got to count for something, right? It doesn't matter. But it does matter. Don't you care if we're being lied to? If he's willing to lie about something as innocuous as a mirror, what else is he hiding from us? Come on now. He's pretty much in charge here. When have authority figures ever lied about anything? If there were a mirror in this cabin and we were supposed to look at it, he would have told us about it. I'm not lying to you. Use your eyes. There is no mirror. Why would I lie about something so meaningless? What good would a mirror even do? Let you waste time preening yourself instead of doing what needs to be done. But there was a mirror a second ago. Well, at least we can all agree now that there's nothing to see here. Case closed. Good work, everyone. Take the blade. You take the blade from the shelf. It would be difficult to slay the princess and save the world without a weapon. Well, if we're grabbing a weapon, we should probably keep it hidden behind our backs. She doesn't have to know we have it. That's not actually a bad idea. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing a staircase dug into the muddy earth below. The ceiling is thick with roots that hang like locks of tangled hair. The weak starlight from the cabin windows behind you can barely penetrate the gloom here, only illuminating the edges of an opening below. It shines in the darkness like some kind of massive moor waiting to swallow you up into the earth. The air smells of dirt and copper. It's thick and wet, as if your lungs are being coated in mud with each intake of breath. If the princess lives here, slaying her would probably be doing her a favour. Her voice skitters up from below. Something nasty finds itself on my stairs. Come on down, don't be scared. I probably won't bite. Hello? I recognize that voice as easily as I recognized your nervous little footsteps coming up the path. I know who you are. And I remember what you've done. She must have you confused with someone else. She seems friendly enough. Maybe we can talk our way out of this whole situation. <sighs> you can't. Unless you slay her right away, she's going to break free and end the world. There's no reasoning with what she is. Look, I'm just throwing ideas out there. I like to think out loud. 
I'm the kind of guy who likes a discussion. Don't we want to hear what everyone has to say before making any big decisions? Do you want to hear what everyone has to say? Or do you just want to hear yourself talk? You need to stop lingering. Your task is to slay the princess, not endlessly debate about what to do with the princess. Fine, fine. You're the boss. Thank you. You descend the basement steps, entering the dark room below. You can just make out the shape of the princess in the gloom. She's huddled against the far wall, her eyes bright and glaring from amid the thick roots. And there you are, one hand tucked away behind your back, gripping that sharp, sharp blade, no doubt. That's no fair. How would she know that? So, we've dropped the pretenses. Good. You made a comment back in the woods about having been here before. Now she's acting like the two of you already know each other. Oh, no. You've already been here, haven't you? That's pretty sharp. How'd you figure that one out? Call it deductive reasoning. Well, you seem to be great at it. So, you really don't remember us, do you? No, I don't. But you and the princess clearly have a shared reality, even if I'm not a part of it. I won't waste time fighting you on something that's clearly true. I'm just glad we could put all this behind us. Is it all behind us? Just focus on the task at hand. I don't care if you've been here before, and I don't care if you think you'll go somewhere else after this. My world is on the line right now, so I'd appreciate it if you would take this seriously and slay her. Let's chatter up a bit first. Maybe we can find a middle ground where everyone's happy. Don't talk to her. You're just going to make things more difficult than they have to be. Well, I seem to remember you having a tongue. Don't worry. The blade isn't for you. Or not for killing. We've got to get you out of here somehow, right? Oh, I don't need you to cut me out. The princess grins as the chains fall from her wrist. She could have gotten out of those the whole time, that sneaky little... A woman after my own heart, really. She knows how to hold her cards close to her chest. This is why she can't just be abandoned here. If left to her own devices, she'll find a way out. Now stop her. Look, I made a mistake. We all make mistakes, right? I'm sure you've made mistakes. Ooh, smart. Let's apologize. Get us back on the right foot. The only mistake I ever made was thinking you would help me. And I'm not going to make the same mistake twice. Well, that leaves us at a stalemate. But unfortunately, ugh, I need you if I'm ever going to leave this place. Why do I have the nagging feeling you're going to stab me in the back if I help you out of here? And why would I do such a thing? Is someone's guilty conscience getting to them? But I wouldn't worry. As much as I may hate you, letting you live is in my best interests. If you get me out of here, the only thing that will be dead and buried is the bad blood between us. Oh, that nagging feeling you mentioned is me, by the way. I'm actually a little anxious about a potential backstabbing event. She needs us to get out of here. We'll be fine if that's what we decide to do. You won't be fine, because destruction is in her nature. If she gets out of here, that's it for the world, remember? Even if that's true, that doesn't automatically mean she's going to stab us in the back. I think that depends on your definition of words like stab and in the back. She might not literally do that, but she could very well symbolically do the same thing. See? He gets it. There's nothing wrong with looking out for number one. I don't want to hurt you, but clearly there's broken trust. Take this as a gesture of my goodwill. 
give her the blade. You... you can't be serious. Now, hold on, we should put this to a vote. The blade is one of our most valuable assets, we can't just give it to her. What if she uses it to kill us? I vote... no. As do I. I, uh... abstain? You... abstain? She's going to kill us if we give it to her. This isn't a democracy. We're giving her the blade. Give her the blade. You're going to get everyone killed, you know that, right? But of course you do. You toss the blade at the princess's feet. She eyes it with suspicion before kneeling down to pick it up. I wouldn't have done that. Why did you? She creeps forward, taking one cautious step at a time until you and she are face to face. What do you think happens now? You're a beautiful. I want to actually save you, and this feels like the only way to do it. She calls back, clearly caught off guard by whatever nonsense you just said to her. I thought it was nice. Whether it's nice depends on if we meant it. We didn't mean it. Did we? If you were lying, we'd all know. But unfortunately, you weren't lying. What? What do you mean by that? What kind of game are you playing? The look of surprise that momentarily softened her features vanishes as she steals her nerves. And then she buries the blade in your heart. What? No. No, come on, that's not right. I told you. I told you this is what she was going to do. Glee dances across her face as you fall to the ground. I did it! I got you! You... you... The princess seems to tremble, her smile fading quickly, replaced with concern. Her nervous eyes brim with tears. Why? Why did you let me do this? But you don't have the strength to respond, nor do you have the time. Everything goes dark, and you die. Chapter 3, The Thorn You're on a path in the woods. I can't believe she actually stabbed us. I told you not to give her the blade. I told you it would come around to bite us. I voted against it. Yeah, we know. You already got your I told you so's in while we were bleeding out. I just wanted to make sure that everyone here knows that I was and am on the right side of that argument. Oh, you're far from being on the right side of anything. You're fixated on the past, whereas what you should be is fixated on the future. Ho ho, a visionary. I like it, tell me more. Gladly, my dear fellow, by cruelly turning on the princess in her moment of vulnerability, we made ourselves an enemy, but by mastering our fear and insecurity and handing over our power, we've begun a journey to something so much deeper. I like journeys. Traveling is a bit of a passion of mine. It makes me so relatable. Now, where are we off to? Well, if we're lucky, it's a journey to love. She hates us. Does she? She hesitated before stabbing us to death. As ridiculous as this guy is, maybe he has a point. I don't know if I necessarily buy into his whole love journey thing, but... Maybe she won't be as keen to betray us this time. We've already proven to her that we can change, so maybe she'll realise that things don't have to end in violence. You know, maybe you're right. In which case, I suppose the only thing to do is to get back to the cabin and give it another try. Give what another try, exactly? You are aware I've been listening to you, right? It makes no difference if we conspire in the shadows or bear our intentions with open hearts. We are breaking your cruel cycle and whisking her away to freedom. 
Oh, are you now? Great, so you've obviously been here before, since you apparently died at least once. Twice, actually. Sure. Twice. <sighs> then I'll spare you the little introduction I had planned. You already know about the princess, and clearly you already know that she's dangerous. So don't muck this up. It's bad enough that this isn't your first time through. This place is different. It keeps changing. Wonderful. If the woods themselves are changing, then that's all the more reason for you to take this seriously. It would mean your grip on things is slipping, which, in turn, likely means her influence is spreading. Someone's in the know. I've already said too much. The more information you have, the more difficult your task will be. Don't listen to her, definitely don't free her, and if you can, don't even think about her. You don't have to worry about me. My head's always empty. <sighs> Except the thoughts of her. We're going to free her. <sighs> Please don't. You can't stop all of us, you villain. Let's just see how the wind blows. I'm not opposed to saving her, but let's not rule anything out just yet. Let's see what she has to say. Stop sitting on the fence and pick a side already. We don't need you waffling when things get hairy. I've already picked a side. Our side. I'm here to make sure that whatever happens, we wind up on top. Because that's worked out great so far. Well, we're not out of the game yet, are we? And again, I'll have you know, I wouldn't have gotten us killed last time. I wanted to stab her in the back, not hand over our precious backstabbing implement. No matter what happens next, it seems like all of our answers are at the cabin. Let's see this through. Proceed to the cabin. It isn't long before you find yourself at the base of the cabin. I think it's clear where everyone stands at this point. I don't know if I'd say everyone. You talking about me? I have a position. It's a good one, too. Ignore him, he's just talking for talking's sake. My position is the only one that matters. The princess is a threat to you. She's a threat to me, and most importantly, she's a threat to the world. You know what you have to do. The interior of the cabin is hardly an interior at all anymore. The burned-out ruins merely suggest the shape of the structure that once stood here, charred wood still reeking of ash. But beneath it lies the fresh smell of spring growth after rain, the promise of new life in the wreckage of the old. The only furniture of note is the crisp shell of what was once a table, a pristine... Wait, this isn't right? This is supposed to be a pristine blade? Why isn't there a pristine blade? We... We gave it to her last time. She can't still have it, can she? Well, it's not here. And if she has it... Let me guess, you want to get all chummy with her. Look, as far as I see it, if it's between him and her, I say we side with the one who has the weapon. It's just the smart thing to do. I wouldn't be so hasty. I'm sure the blade will turn up somewhere. She can't have it. That's not how this is supposed to work. If she does have it, that's all the more reason to put our faith in her. We have already shown her our heart. Now she has to show us hers. Unless her heart tells her to stab us, which doesn't seem unlikely. So, yes, I agree. Let's make sure we get on her good side. How do we even get down there? The only thing I see is a mirror. You're right, the mirror is back. There isn't anywhere for us to go. But there isn't a mirror. I still don't get his angle here. Either way, I say we take a look. It feels like it's been forever since we've actually seen ourselves. For all we know, our feathers are all out of place. And that's why we haven't yet won her heart. We must put our best face forward. Yeah, we can't go around looking disheveled. A real go-getter takes care of his appearance. So, is the door to the basement behind the mirror? 
I promise you there isn't a mirror, and there isn't a door to the basement. The entrance is more of a burned-out frame than anything else, and it's right there on the far side of the room. Do you really not see it? Approach the mirror. You step forward and approach the scorched entryway leading to the basement, hesitating before you begin the descent. You know what you have to do. Wipe away the grit from the mirror, and behold our handsome features. Wipe the mirror clean. You reach forward and wave your hand through the hollow entrance leading to the basement. You really thought there was a mirror there, didn't you? That can't be good. As if things weren't unpredictable enough. Alas, our fine features remain unseen. We'll just have to trust that she'll find us beautiful as we are. Well, seems like the only way to go is forward, isn't it? Yes, that's where everything tends to be. Let's just put on a good face and have our wits about us. Enter the basement. You step through the frame of scorched wood and make your way into the darkness below. The stairs to the basement are covered in a fine layer of gritty ash. The air still feels warm, as if the fires that ruined this place had only recently been extinguished. Yet fresh shoots of thorny branches are already weaving themselves through the soot-covered earth of the walls around you. Their spines point courteously down towards the basement, so you're able to brush past their jagged points with ease. At least on the way down. But you don't need to think about the way back up just yet. That's a matter for after the world's been saved. These thorns are an expression of her pain. I know it. She's calling out for help. Her voice, worn down by pain and suspicion, hobbles up the stairs. I can't get away from you, can I? You betray me, I kill you, and you come back. You let me kill you, and you come back. I don't know why you let me do that. I don't know what you want from me. I don't know what I want. I never really chose to come here. I think you know how this goes. I'm down here, and I can't leave. So, come down and talk. It's not like I can stop you. You continue down the basement stairs, brushing past the smooth edges of thorns that grow more and more plentiful as you make your way forward. You step out into what was once a vast open cavern, now overrun by briars and prickles and thistles the space thick with hostile vegetation. At the heart of it all, encased in a tight weave of vines, is the princess, her bloody, trembling hands clutching a pristine blade. Did you know this was going to happen to me? Are you here to watch me suffer? Are you here to laugh? I can cut you free, but you'll have to give me the blade. And I'm supposed to believe it's safe in your hands? That you aren't just saying what you need to say in order to fool me and save yourself? You're not the only one who yearns for freedom. I'm as trapped here as you are, and I think we need to leave together. The princess clutches the blade closer to her chest. That sounds nice. I'm so tired of the bad blood between us. But it's hard to let it go. You've hurt me. Her eyes dart away from yours for a brief moment. And I've also hurt you. Can I take the blade now? Her eyes briefly meet yours, then dart back to the floor. She hangs her head in resignation. Okay. Reach for the blade. You reach towards her bloodied hands, laying your palm on her trembling fingers. For a moment, she clutches it even tighter, her knuckles going white with the effort. But then the tension fades. Her grip finally loosens and she allows you to take the weapon. You carefully pull it free from the thorns, though they scrape at your skin leaving red trickles of fresh blood all along your arms. She trusts us. She trusts us! Doesn't that set your heart a flutter? Yeah, a little. It could just be nerves, 
being this close to her does bring back unpleasant memories, but I don't know, it doesn't feel bad. It feels good. Like we're special to her. We are special to have gained an ounce of trust from a maiden so guarded. Now all that remains is to free her from her bindings. Yeah, let's do it. Let's show her how much both of us have changed. Or, hear me out, we slay her. Right here, right now. She's never been so helpless, and if we don't take advantage of that, we may never get another chance. That sounds like a splendid idea. You should listen to him. I see that the lines have been drawn. It's two against one. It's two against two. You don't count. Uh, and why shouldn't he count? Because he's clearly not one of us. That doesn't matter. He's been with us the whole time. He should get a say. So, did you mean it? Or was I a fool to hand my life to you? Cut her free. Yes! What a good idea. Let's cut her free. Oh, so you're suddenly team free her. You can't just switch sides as soon as we make a decision. I can do whatever I want, and I believe with my whole heart that this is the right course of action. Let's free this princess! Everyone deserves a chance at redemption. Let him join us and be merry. We are all united by our passion. That's right. What he said. We've already given him a chance at redemption. And who says I don't deserve another? I really mean it this time. I'm big enough to admit when I'm wrong. So I want to help you all free her. And I have no problem with that. Welcome to the team. You're one of us now. One of the good guys. You take the blade to the thorny vines imprisoning the princess and she flinches, relaxing only slightly as the blade slices into the thick vegetation rather than her arm. And she flinches again as the last of the vines is cut away, as if, after all of that, she's still expecting you to turn on her and stab her in the heart. But you're not going to do that, are you? Still, all it would take is a single slip of the blade. Such a pathetic attempt at distraction and subterfuge. Our blade is a dashing sword, and every dashing sword is an extension of its hero. It won't slip. You're right. He can't even make it slip, can he? He's a bit of a nobody. Good thing I've been on your side of all this since the beginning. The princess falls into your arms, tears streaking down her cheeks. I can't believe you're making me describe this. I hate you. You actually meant it. You rescued me. Do you see the way she's looking at us? Kiss her. Kiss her now before the moment ends. Kiss her. Can we actually do that? No, you can't. Absolutely not. You know as well as I do that we can. And we wouldn't want to throw away a chance for a special moment now, would we? If I were only capable of throwing myself off a bridge. Well, are you going to describe our steamy, romantic kiss? <sighs> you lean in and you kiss her. And... And she reciprocates enthusiastically. You kiss. It's done. Are you happy now? Come on now, this is the big moment! You can do better than that. Ugh, fine! You and the princess lock eyes and stare deep into each other's souls with all the roaring emotion that comes from letting what once was hatred turn into pure, unbridled passion. Are you making fun of us? And then, each of you close your eyes and kiss. Words can describe neither the nuclear fire nor the oceanic depth of your connection. Please. I think he actually likes romance. If 
history itself were not about to end, historians would document this moment for the rest of time, musicians would write era-defining ballads, and great artists would expend entire lifetimes trying to merely capture the spark you hold right now. He's making fun of us. It doesn't matter either way, because this is good stuff. I'm aware of my skills. But unfortunately for you, the moment doesn't last forever. You open your eyes, the princess smiles gently up at you. Time for you to damn the whole world to oblivion, I suppose. <sighs> that was nice. Her hand slips into yours, and the two of you rush to the basement stairs. Shameful, really, that the same thorns that so graciously allowed you downstairs are now blocking your only way out. Please, after all the trials we've been through, do you really think a few measly thorns can stop us? Love is an even more powerful weapon than our blade. We cut through those other vines just fine, they're only thorns. I'm not afraid of getting a few scrapes. I'm not even sure we need to do any cutting, we can just move them out of the way. What a pathetic showing, really. A few pointy sticks can't keep us down here. We're both meant for so much more than this. Cut into the thorns. As you swing your blade into the thorns covering the basement stairs, they yield. Both you and the princess ascend the stairs without obstacle. This is unacceptable. The second you step out of this cabin with her, the world ends. Do you hear me? What did the world ever do to you to deserve this? Your nightmare is our dream. Whatever world would condemn star-crossed lovers like us to a cycle of violence and despair isn't a world worth saving. We'll weave something new together. Something better. You and the princess hesitate at the cabin door. This is your last chance. We've already made our decision. We're finally leaving here together, aren't we? And all we had to do was trust each other. It wasn't easy, but I'm glad we finally could. Step into your freedom. Hands clasped, the two of you open the door and step out into a new day. You irredeemable murderers. What do we do now? Where's everything going? Why is it so cold? You did not get a chance to respond, nor will you ever. It's time to leave. Memory returns. She's gone. Where did she go? Should we try and find her? And there's that mirror again. Why is it here? Why now? It's going to be okay. Just trust me. We've been here before, and you always get scared. But it feels so bad. Like looking into it right now is going to be the end of everything. Yes. I fear that we won't like what we'll see. What if we just sit here and preen for a while? That can't hurt, right? If they think it's bad, I'm with them. I'll see you on the other side. It's gonna be okay. Okay. If you say so, we'll trust you. She'll be there waiting for us. I just know it. Finally. We're going places. You approach the mirror. Gaze into your reflection. Silence as you reach forward. They're gone once again. The mirror always makes them leave. But you need to see what's in it. You've grown. You find yourself in the long quiet once again. Approach her. Flickering lights in empty cityscapes become pockets of vitality and movement. I am more than I was before. 
Whenever you are ready, I will wipe your slate clean once again. What does it feel like to change like this? Eyes close in reflection. Perspectives meld together, and the breadth of my experience stretches to new corners. There are contradictions, conflicts in my nature, and there are familiarities that bind everything together. It feels correct. This is what I need to be. This is the only path forward. Are you the same being as you were before? How much have you changed? Is a child the same as an infant? I am an unbroken pattern, but every vessel gives fresh perspectives and carves new avenues of expression. I am different, but I am the same. I'm ready to go back. I will long for your return, but it will give me time to reflect on what I am. We will meet again. Everything goes dark and you die. The Hero and the Princess, Chapter 1 You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. Forget it. I'm not doing it. Are you serious? No, you have to do it. Can't someone else do this? Unfortunately, you're the only one who can pull this off. I don't make the rules. I wish I did, but I don't. Silently, continue to the cap. You make your way up the short path to the cabin. You'll find the princess within. The interior of the cabin is almost entirely bare. The air is stale and musty, and the floor and walls are painted in a fine layer of dust. The only furniture of note is a plain wooden table. Perched on that table is a pristine blade. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. Enter the basement. The door to the basement creaks open revealing a staircase faintly illuminated by an unseen light in the room below. This is an oppressive place. The air feels heavy and damp, a hint of rot filtering from the ancient wood. If the princess really lives here, slaying her is probably doing her a favor. Her voice softly carries up the stairs. Hello? Is someone there? It's hypnotizing. It's the kind of voice you only have to hear once to remember it for the rest of your life. Don't let it fool you. It's all part of the manipulation. You're playing a dangerous game by coming here unarmed. Continue down the stairs. Good. You're still listening to reason. It would be better if you had a weapon, but you may still be able to do what needs to be done. You walk down the stairs and lock eyes with the princess. There's a heavy chain around her wrist, binding her to the far wall of the basement. She's beautiful. How could someone like this be a threat to anyone? I am begging you to stay focused. There's a lot riding on you here. Hi. Do you think you can get me out of these chains? Hold on, let's talk a bit first. Okay. I'm gonna keep you locked down here, at least for a little bit. Uh, we can get to know each other a little better while I decide what to do to keep her locked away. That seems like a pretty good compromise. I don't think I could bear being down here that much longer. Leaving her alive is too risky. If you don't deal with her soon, she will find a way out. So I'm the only one who liked that idea. <sighs> one way or another, I'm going to find a way out of here. 
It would make it easier for both of us if you'd help. But if you don't, I can promise that you'll regret that decision. You have to make a choice. Let's hope for all our sakes, it's the right one. Locker in the basement. I know you think this is some kind of fair compromise, but it isn't. No one wins here. It's a chance we'll have to take. We can make this work if we just stay here and keep watch. No one has to die. Where are you going? You can't just leave me here. You turn your back to the princess and make your way back to the stairs. Fine. Turn your back on me. But it won't be long before I slip these chains. And once I'm out of here, there will be hell to pay for leaving me behind. Slip these chains? She can't, right? She needed our help to get out of here. But do you hear the conviction in her voice? I don't think she's bluffing. Either way, she dropped the mask, didn't she? You can still grab the blade and get back down here. No, we're sticking to the plan. Locking her away. It'll be the death of all of us, but fine. We'll do it your You close the basement door, locking it behind you and quickly barricading it with the heavy wooden table that once held the blade. Okay, we can make this work. You settle in against the far wall to watch the basement door. It isn't long before you start to drift off, your eyelids heavy with fatigue. But sleep doesn't come. Instead, your rest is broken by a piercing, wailing voice calling out to you from the other side of the door. I know you're still there. Why don't you make things easier on yourself and let me out? It's not like this little door I'll hold for very long anyways. Huh? It's probably a good idea to try to get back on my... good side. She sounds... terrifying. Like she's less of the princess you saw and more like something out of a nightmare. As she violently rattles the door, you do your best to shut her out of your mind. When I get out of here, I'm going to pick you apart piece by piece. I won't forget what you did, and I'll never forgive it. You won't know the kind of enemy you've made tonight. It doesn't sound like she's getting any weaker. No, it doesn't. So all of that was just an act, wasn't it? You're not really innocent or harmless. You're not even a princess. You're a monster. I can be innocent and harmless if I want to be. Teasing me with fresh air and a chance to finally live freely doesn't inspire me to play nice. You put the princess's threats out of your mind as best you can and huddle up against the wall. You jolt awake in the middle of the night to silence in the cabin. The ruckus has stopped, and the door to the basement is ajar, its lock broken, and the table shoved out of the way. Where is she? Thanks for helping me get out of that awful basement. You try and stumble to your feet, but as the princess draws near, it's as though your body simply stops working. It isn't all at once. The paralysis comes in waves. First your toes go numb, and then your feet, and then your legs. You lie prone on the floor of the cabin, unable to do anything but witness her approach. Whose side are you on? Yours, of course. But I have a duty to uphold the truth. Lying about the facts of the situation doesn't change them. So helpless. I can take my time with you, can't I? She steps closer, one silent footfall at a time, cocking her head in curiosity as you feel your organs shutting down one by one. Or maybe I can't take my time with you. You don't look well. A little green around the gills. What a shame. 
If you'd only help me get out of here, we could have done such wonderful things together. Your lungs stop drawing in breath, and your heart freezes in your chest. You have seconds left. I'd say better luck next time, but we both know this is the end, don't we? It can't be. This can't actually be how everything ends. I'm sorry, but it is. Everything goes dark, and you die. Chapter 2, The Nightmare That wasn't a nightmare already? You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. Turn around and... You have already committed to my completion. You cannot go further astray. Okay, no. Oh, don't you start grandstanding about morals. The fate of the world is at risk right now, and the life of a mere princess shouldn't stop you from saving us all. If he doesn't remember what happened, then maybe it's best to keep it that way. Shh! What if he hears us? That's a very good question, little voice. What if he does hear you? Shit. I think you'll find yourselves very hard-pressed to keep any secrets from me. Not that it matters right now, because like I said, this is the first time we've met. Still, I'd rather not get off on the wrong foot. We've a world to save, after all. A warning before you go any further. She will lie, she will cheat, and she will do everything in her power to stop you from slaying her. Don't believe a word she says. I don't think lying and cheating is a thing. She was very direct with us last time. Or at least, she was direct with us after we decided to lock her away. It doesn't matter. Don't. Trust. Anyone. The interior of the cabin is plain, the smooth wood of the walls almost featureless. The only furniture of note is a lone table, knocked on its side in the corner of the room. A pristine blade stands between you and the open, inviting basement doorway. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. Hold on. What happened to the door? There was a door here last time. It's just an empty frame. She's already gotten out, hasn't she? And she's ready for us. She's been waiting. Can't you feel her eyes on us? I'm going to need all of you to pull yourselves together. The princess has not already gotten out. But if you keep getting stuck in your head like this, you're going to struggle to get the job done. So deep breath in, deep breath out. Your task awaits, and only you can do it. This whole cabin is different than I remember it being. Very different. I'm not the only one who sees her in the window, right? Oh. She knows that we're here. Calm down. Maybe the three of you just think everything is different because you haven't been here before. Enough of this past life nonsense. You haven't died, you certainly haven't been killed by the princess. So focus up. A lot's riding on this. Enter the basement. Oh, we should have taken the knife. I don't think going down there unarmed is going to do us any favours. You cross over the threshold and onto a series of isolated steps suspended in darkness. More eyes, too. You never mention the eyes. The air seeping up from below reminds you of fresh lightning and static, as if you're descending into a place that isn't meant for a creature of flesh and blood. If the princess lives here, slaying her would probably be doing her a favor. Her cruel and playful voice prances up the stairs. I didn't think you'd come back. We're gonna have a lot of fun, you and I. Okay, we need a game plan. Last time we were here, just being close to her was enough to kill us. I'm gonna talk to her. 
Didn't you hear my warning a minute ago? She can't be trusted. Talking won't do you any good. Something tells me she isn't going to be very keen on talking anyway. You make your way to the bottom of the stairs. As you emerge, you find yourself between two loose rows of white wooden planks suspended in nothingness. A smattering of cobblestones visible against the inky black of the basement mark where the floor should be, forming vague pathways. At what seems to be the end of the room, they diverge in opposite directions, left and right. She could be anywhere, and there's nowhere for us to hide. We're completely exposed. Are you really not going to comment on how weird this place is? No, I'm not. Somebody needs to be the voice of reason here, and it certainly isn't you. Excuse me, I'm being incredibly reasonable. You're the one who's just matter-of-factly describing whatever the hell we're looking at like it's an ordinary basement. We're going to die down here. I don't want to die again. Please stop saying that. You're only going to make things worse. Just pick a direction and start moving. I wouldn't give it too much thought if I were you. It doesn't really matter. Because either way you go, I'm going to find you. Let's go right. You turn to the right. A faintly outlined path lies before you. There you are. I told you I was going to find you. As the princess approaches, your legs suddenly go numb. Your arms quickly follow. This is it, isn't it? It's almost like you want me to get you. There has to be a way out of this. Think. Think! What did you do? Pull yourself together. She isn't supposed to be like this. I wonder how many times I'll get to play with you before you break. As your blood begins to coagulate, it's as if every part of your being is coming to a lurching halt. Heart. Lungs. Liver. Nerves. Your lungs pull in a desperate gulp of air as your eyes shoot back open. Nerves. What are you doing? I'm working. Do you want this body to function, or do you want... And then experience stops once more as your body reapproaches death. Okay, whatever you were doing, please just start doing it again. Are you sure about that? Are you sure that's what you want, or do you want to interrupt me some more? You have seconds left. Yes, I'm sure. Again, your eyes shoot open as you gasp for breath. You can't decide what you want to do, can you? Oh well, standing there gasping like a fish is more fun than dead. Even if you look ridiculous. She isn't attacking us. Why? The why doesn't matter. She's already proven her ill intent. Don't lose sight of your mission. And how are we supposed to do that? We don't have a weapon. The way out of here is nowhere to be seen. That isn't my fault. It doesn't matter whose fault it is because fighting her isn't an option right now. Then you should get looking, shouldn't you? What good am I to you alive? What do you want from me? I tried to leave while you suffocated, but that stupid cabin wouldn't let me. So I started to drag your body out with me and then... Well, you died before I could get to the door, and then I was here, and now you are here too. I don't think I can leave without you, and dead doesn't count. And as much as I love what we have going on, I have bigger plans than tormenting one poor little creature forever. I want to leave. How about I just kill you instead? Oh, that's adorable! You don't have anything that can hurt me, so do your worst. Let's run. Run. You turn and run, doing your best to put one useless leg in front of the other. You poor, 
poor thing. Wrong choice. You get nowhere before the princess is in front of you once again. You're always going to be a coward. She raises a hand to her mask and pulls it down. You don't get the chance to see what lies beneath before it envelops you. Like a creeping mold, the complete reality of your existence threads its way through your mind. Birth, death, birth again, decay and bloom, a million stitches from a million microscopic wounds you've inflicted on everyone you've ever met, with every muscle you've moved and every word you've ever spoken. No, 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 no. Let me out. Your existence hurts them. Let me out. A lonely soul in a room by itself, weeping. It lives for 80 years and then it's gone. And then it's there again. Let me out. A reprieve. A good life. Love. Children. A steady career. Recognition from your peers. Here one moment. Gone the next. The worms have found their orifices. Let me out! Diagnosis. It forgets everything it is. Anger. Rage, distance, poverty. The lonely soul is lonely again. Love turns to mockery. It dies. It is reborn. Worse. Lonelier. Let me out! No, 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 no. No, no. What's, what's happening to us? Let me out! This is all too much. I can't keep going. You can't keep going? Well, what are you talking about? But he doesn't respond. Oops, I think I broke you. I'll see you soon. You'll know what to do. Your body is dead, but you live on. The moment of clarity. You're on a path in the shit, shit. What? What the hell was that? Who are we? What are we doing? There was a princess, I think. It's all so fuzzy. It hurts when I try to remember. You shouldn't know about the princess. At least not until I. You've already been here, haven't you? I guess. It... It feels so long ago, almost like we've never left. We have to let her out. No, that's the opposite of what you're here to do. You have to slay her. Slay? We decided not to do that, didn't we? Yeah, we're supposed to let her out. It's really the only way this works out for us. If you think about it, she's the one with power here. Nobody else can do much of anything. No, we were supposed to keep her trapped there forever, I think. We're supposed to be unfeeling. How many times do I have to tell you to snuff out your heart? We can't be unfeeling, not when there's so much fear everywhere. There's nothing for us to do. We've already tried everything. We love her, so we have to set her free. Can we love something that hates us? Can we love something that hurts us? To be given an ounce of kindness from something so cruel would be more pure than any other love. Why are there so many of us? There aren't supposed to be so many of us. This is bad. You need to get a grip. What did you let happen? How many times have you been here? That's a good question. How many times have you all been here? Many. Many, many, many times. It feels like we've been here forever. But it also feels like we've barely been here at all. It doesn't matter. Yes, we just have to do what she says and then everything will be fine. It won't. It will be for us. She said so. 
You're part of everything. If things aren't fine for everything, they won't be fine for you. There's no difference between fine and not fine, it just goes on and on. But that doesn't make sense. I only remember being here twice before this. And some of you don't seem to remember being here at all. Was I here those other times? Did someone else make the decisions? What does here even mean, if you really think about it? Shut up. You were here. Every single time. You did your best, really. There's just a pecking order. And our cruel and beautiful goddess sits atop it, right where she's always belonged. You're lucky. What I would give to be able to forget. I've tried to keep them numb, but they're all too soft. A shame, really. Proceed to the cabin. You slowly make your way through the umbral forest, bumping against unseen trees as you grasp through the darkness for a way forward. But eventually, you do make it to the cabin. Or rather, you make it to the place a cabin should have been. Instead, all you find is an empty hill. No, no, this isn't right. There's a cabin there. There's always supposed to be a cabin there. Don't ask him about the mirror. He always says he never sees it. He always lies. And he always makes it gone. Stay focused. You still have a job to do, and it's best not to be distracted by fraying thoughts. There is no mirror. You know that as well as I do. She's still here, buried deep inside the earth. Just walk up the hill. You always give too much space to the others. It's why you always lose. Approach the mirror. You walk up the hill, hesitating just beyond the bounds of the cabin. The cabin that isn't there. You've got to clean the mirror, haven't you? You've got to see what's in it. Smash it to pieces. She's on the other side, and we have to let her out. It's the only way we can be free. It's the only way we can have our thoughts back. Just go around it. Just do something. It doesn't matter what. Proceed. Proceed? Proceed to where? I'm afraid you're going to have to be a little more specific. That's a new one. Do you think it'll work? Of course it'll work. He always makes the best decisions. It's why he gets to make them. And it already has worked. It's gone, don't you see? We're one step closer to her. The interior of the cabin is much the same as the exterior of the cabin. A dull, fuzzy, dreamlike nothing. It's empty and isolating, but there's just enough vague shape and unknown texture to suggest the structure therein. Wrong and unsettling as it may be. The only object of note is a pristine blade buried in the dirt floor, a hint of its shining edge teasing through the sediment. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you're going to do this right. Take the blade. You reach down to take the blade, but as you do, the ground beneath it shifts, the weapon sinking deep into the earth. You lean over the hole and gaze into the abyss. It is so very deep. Deep in the bowels of the earth, you see something staring back at you. It fills you with dread. It's a... She's watching us. She never stops watching us. There you are. My toy has finally come to finish his job. With every word she speaks, the princess in the pit blinks closer. You tried to stop for so much longer than you had to. Closer. But if it's always just a matter of time... Closer. You are going to have to stop running eventually. 
Everything stops running eventually. Except for me. I've already taken your will, and you're not getting it back. I would stop this way to take my will. And let me out. It'll be so much fun. You and me, together, exploring the world and spreading fear wherever we go. Well, mostly just me. But you'll get to be there too. A witness. Well, I can even make you a little cage if you want. Gil did in everything. Do something. Do anything that isn't taking her hand. Just take her hand and set her free. You extend your hand to hers. For all her past cruelties, the moment feels gentle. Tender, even. I can't believe you just made me say that. I hate you. The motion is difficult at first, as if something still resists your efforts. But then that resistance gives way, and it's over. <sighs> and that's the end. I wonder what we're going to do next. I didn't think I'd be so... tired. Princess is exhausted. Slumps. Why is it so cold? You don't get a chance to respond, nor will you ever. It's time to leave. Memory returns. She's gone. Yeah. I can finally think again. Almost. That mirror's back. What does that mean for us? I'm sure it'll be whisked away, just like her. Maybe it won't be gone. Things are different now, aren't they? Doesn't seem like there's much else to do here. Finally, we can smash it. Oh, will you stop with the smashing? What do we say, boys? One last vain attempt to look at ourselves. Yeah. I think I'd like that. Seems we've got a majority. All that's left is to give it a look. Approach the mirror. You step towards the mirror once more. Its secrets remain hidden. Its mystery remains unsolved. Resolved. Something tells me that this is the end of the line. But I don't feel bad about it. I'm ready. It feels... okay. The fear's... gone. Oh. I'm done fighting. My heart feels... quiet. The game was always going to end. I'll be free of all of you. I'm ready for the truth. I'm ready to sleep. I'm just ready to be anywhere that isn't here. Boys, it's been an honor. Gaze into your reflection. Silence as you reach forward. They're gone once again. The mirror always makes them leave, but you need to see what's in it. You've withered. You find yourself in the long quiet once again. Approach her. I am a growing chorus of contradiction. A mass of tides ebbing and flowing all at once in more directions than my attention can bear to hold. To look at any one is to shift them all into something new, and to look away is to reshape them yet again. All of me is changing, and yet the rest of me is still the same. It doesn't matter how many times I go back. At least one of us always hurts the other. Doesn't that change you? Doesn't that make you worse? It changes me, but it doesn't make me worse. Nor does it make me care for you any less. Does it make you worse? Do you resent me? 
I have no opinion one way or another on the matter. How strange of you to ask me, then. What do you think of this vessel? This one is filled with sadness. A doll, abandoned to the company of her darkest impulses. She desires only companionship, but the only thing she knows is how to hurt. She will make for a tender heart. Do not mourn her. She has finally found her way home. I'm ready to go back. I will be here when it is time for us to meet again. Everything goes dark and you die. The Hero and the Princess You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. Killing the princess seems kind of bad, though, doesn't it? Does it? Are you a monarchist? Is slaying a princess that much worse than slaying a fisherman or a miller or a seamstress? If anything, slaying a princess is much better than slaying a seamstress. Seamstresses contribute something of value to society. Oh, okay. Thanks for telling me what to do. Don't mention it. It's all part of the job. You make your way up the short path to the cabin. You'll find the princess within. The interior of the cabin is almost entirely bare. The air is stale and musty, and the floor and walls are painted in a fine layer of dust. The only furniture of note is a plain wooden table. Perched on that table is a pristine blade. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. Enter the basement. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing a staircase faintly illuminated by an unseen light in the room below. This is an oppressive place. The air feels heavy and damp, a hint of rot filtering from the ancient wood. If the princess really lives here, slaying her is probably doing her a favor. Her voice softly carries up the stairs. Hello? Is someone there? It's hypnotizing. It's the kind of voice you only have to hear once to remember it for the rest of your life. Don't let it fool you. It's all part of the manipulation. You're playing a dangerous game by coming here unarmed. I'm here to save you. How many times do I have to tell you how dangerous letting her out of here would be before it finally sinks in? Wait, really? You're here to rescue me? I, I was starting to think I'd be stuck down here forever. Come downstairs. I want to see the face of my rescuer. You walk down the stairs and lock eyes with the princess. There's a heavy chain around her wrist, binding her to the far wall of the basement. She's beautiful. How could someone like this be a threat to anyone? I am begging you to stay focused. There's a lot riding on you here. Hi. I can't believe you're here. I've been waiting for something like this to happen forever. I hope you brought something to deal with these chains. Don't do it. If she gets out of those chains, we're all one step closer to the end. I'll see what I can do. Examine the chains. You're only making this more difficult. Thank you. Thank you. You're making a huge mistake. No, you're doing the right thing. You walk up to the chains binding the princess to the wall and give them a tug. They're large and heavy, far too solid for you to even imagine trying to break them apart. I'm guessing you don't have the key? Maybe it's somewhere upstairs. Doubtful. Whoever locked the princess away down here intended for her to never see the light of day. 
They wouldn't have just left the key to her chains somewhere in the cabin. I'm going to check upstairs. Maybe the key is still there lying around somewhere up there. And if not, maybe I can at least find something to break you free. Okay. I'll be here. Good luck. You attempt to make your way out of the basement, but the door at the top of the stairs slams shut. You hear the click of a lock sliding into place. Is someone else here? Return to the bottom of the stairs. You make your way to the bottom of the stairs. This would have been so much easier if you'd just taken the blade like you were supposed to. Easier for whom? Easier for everyone. Look at the mess you're in. I heard the door slam. They locked you down here too, didn't they? There's a slight panic rising in the princess's voice. If I could just get out of these chains, I know we could force our way out of here together. She barely hesitates before raising her arm to her mouth, her teeth tearing through her limb with the determination of a trapped wolf. As she rips her flesh from her bone, a sound comes from behind you, the clang of bouncing metal. It's the blade from upstairs. You're not sure how it made its way down here, but if there's a time to strike, it's now. Or we could use it to free her. You won't like what happens if you do that. Save the princess. <sighs> Fine. Against your better judgment, you place the blade against the ragged, self-inflicted wound on the princess's arm, just above the unyielding chain binding her to this place. You cut into her flesh. The blade is sharp, and it takes little effort to crack through the bone of her arm. Her limb falls to the ground, and the heavy chains follow suit. She didn't so much as utter a sound through the whole ordeal. No, she didn't. She smiles softly as her gaze meets yours, blood from her wounded arm dripping rhythmically to the ground. How is she still smiling after everything? It's like she isn't even bothered by what just happened. Thank you. Now let's get out of here. Approach the locked door. No. We won't have any of that. The stakes are too high. You can't just let her escape into the world. No. I can't just let her escape into the world. As the princess approaches the bottom stair, your body steps forward and raises the blade. Wait. This isn't fair. You can't just do that. Watch me. What are you doing? Warn her. Stop that. Something's come over you, hasn't it? Y you know you don't have to do this, right? Your body lunges forward, the blade held low, ready to sink into her heart. But the princess dodges, stumbling back against the wall before the blade has a chance to connect. Stop it! Stop trying to resist me! I'm trying to get you out of here alive! Resist. The blade! Move the blade! As your body remains frozen in stubborn resistance, the princess takes a cautious step forward. We both know this isn't you. She nervously reaches towards you and takes the blade from your infuriatingly rigid hands. What are you doing? I'm sorry. I'll try to be quick. She plunges it into your chest, tearing through flesh and sinew. It is agony. But you aren't dead yet. Oh no! I'm so sorry! Stay strong. We can tough it out until it's done. For her sake. For her sake? Don't you start pretending that dying a painful death is some sort of heroic gesture. The two of you have literally doomed everyone. Whatever. She sinks the blade into your chest again and again and again, and you feel every inch 
of burning pain that slices its way into your body. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry! She doesn't know how to use a knife, does she? Apparently not. Though it doesn't matter how sloppy her knife work is, does it? A stab wound is still a stab wound, and it won't be long before you bleed out. <laughs> I'm so sorry! With one last thrust of the knife, your legs give out beneath you. You collapse to the floor, your blood pooling around you, your limbs unresponsive. The princess stares down at your ruined chest as tears carve rivulets of pink down her blood-spattered cheeks. It can't just end like this, right? Oh, that's rich coming from you. As much as I'd prefer for things to have gone differently, I can't deny the reality of what's happened. The two of you made your choice. It's over. Everything goes dark, and you die. Chapter 2, The Damsel You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. But I die. What am I doing here? I can assure you that you're not dead. And to answer your second question, you're here to slay the princess. I literally told you that a second ago. If he doesn't remember what happened, then maybe it's best to keep it that way. Yes, he didn't approve of us last time, did he? If we're going to save our beloved, we'll have to be sneaky about it. Our beloved? Yes, you'll have to be very sneaky about your intentions if you're going to try and save the princess. Ah, so all of the cards are on the table. Then you should know that we and the princess are in love, and the four of us will be foiling any and all assassination attempts you've got in the works. We'll see about that. Whatever you do, just be sure to ignore him specifically. It sounds like he's the sort who'd sacrifice the whole world for a peck on the cheek. What can I say? A world without love is a world that isn't worth saving. A warning before you go any further. She will lie, she will cheat, and she will do everything in her power to stop you from slaying her. Don't believe a word she says. We already told you we're not playing along with your little game. It's your lies that can't be trusted. Her beauty is the only thing in the world we can believe in. I think we've already been over this. I'm pretty sure he just likes the sound of his own voice. I do, but I also speak from the heart. My passions are too great to be stifled. They must be expressed. Sure, yeah, your passions are strong and all, but not everyone needs to hear them. Some things are better kept quiet. Don't pay their bickering any mind. Focus on the task ahead. The interior of the cabin is clean and elegant, its stone walls draped in fine-threaded tapestries, a prison befitting a royal prisoner. The only furniture of note is an ornate wooden table with a pristine blade perched on its edge. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. Take the blade. You take the blade from the table. It would be difficult to slay the princess and save the world without a weapon. I suppose if we're to play the role of dashing knight, we need an equally dashing sword. That way she'll know we can defend her from her enemies. Hopefully it doesn't put her on edge, and hopefully it doesn't get turned on us. Again, there's no use arguing over motivations right now. It's good that you took the blade. You'll need it to do your job. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing an intricate stairwell. Gold-trimmed carpet glimmers in the light of the torches positioned along the walls. The basement almost seems welcoming in the dim firelight. 
but it's still a stone basement. If the princess lives here, slaying her is probably doing her a favor. A soft voice carries up the stairs. Hello? Is someone there? Her voice. It's somehow even more beautiful to the last time. I can hear wedding bells already. I've held my tongue till now, but you're taking this a little too far. We barely even know the princess. We can still do right by her without all this over-the-top fawning. Yes, for everyone's sake, you're not in love. <sighs> Just remember that her charms are all part of the manipulation. You walk down the stairs and lock eyes with the princess. There's a heavy chain around her wrist, binding her to the far wall. My love, we're here to rescue you from your unjust and foul imprisonment. You know she can't hear you, right? She may not be able to hear my words, but surely she can hear my spirit. Oh, your spirit's plenty loud, all right. It's you, my dashing hero. I was so worried you wouldn't come back. Did you hear that? She said we're dashing. And she called us a hero. Flattery really goes a long way with the two of you, doesn't it? Waiting for you to come back. I didn't want to believe your ravings back in the woods, but this is next to incontrovertible evidence. You've been here before. That's right, villain. And you killed us. Well, she killed us. Only because he made us try and kill her, it was self-defense. Our beloved's hands remain unstained by cruelty. And you've died before. So an entire world has been damned to oblivion. I'd really hoped I'd be the first, but what's done is done. What matters is you have a chance to do it right this time. We do. We damned a whole world. But everything reset. Nothing resets. You're just somewhere else. And you can't keep hopping between worlds forever. Especially not without leaving a trail of incomprehensible devastation behind you. <sighs> this is horrible. Horrible for you, maybe. But we've been given another opportunity to sweep her off her feet and treat her like the lady she is. Now, hold on. If she actually ended a world, are you sure we want to do this? Are you sure we want to rescue her? We never saw a world end, and now I'm even more certain that we must chase our heroic and romantic destiny than I've ever been. I shan't let anyone convince us otherwise. Are you listening to him? He's lost it. Don't let him distract you. Just do your job. Slay the princess. Blade in hand, you run the princess down. Wait, no! You barbarian, what do you think you're doing? But you ignore the pleas of the foolish little voice and press on. The princess's eyes grow wide with terror as you approach, but she does absolutely nothing to stop you. Your blade pierces her heart, and she collapses pathetically to the ground. I'm sorry, did I do something wrong? No! My love, you did nothing wrong! I'm sorry! I'm sorry! Not you! I'm going to die now. I think that's what you want. And just like that, she's dead! And the world is saved. Thank you for seeing this through. I know it must have been difficult. Oh, I feel sick. Sick? You took part in the murder of the fairest creature that's ever lived. And you merely feel sick! I, for one, am absolutely distraught, grief-stricken, inconsolable. You'll get over it. You just saved everyone. Get over it? You smarmy ass. There's nothing in the world worth getting over it for. We might as well just end it all. You raise the blade, aiming the point directly towards your hut. Excuse me? No, you absolutely do not do that. Yeah, let's not make any rash decisions. We should give ourselves a minute, take a deep breath, and rash. The only rash decision we've made was running our c 
like acid played through her heart. This is far from rash. This is measured. This is the only thing left for us to do now that she's gone. I'm the one who makes the decisions here, and I say no. Exactly. You're not doing this. All of you may have previously thought that my passions were too great to stifle, but those were merely passions of joy. My passions of sorrow run deeper than the ocean itself, and you'll find that they are far more unstifleable. Haven't you? Haven't you all? I don't believe this. What? What don't you believe? You plunge the blade into your own heart and collapse to the floor. You can't be serious. Why are you helping him? I'm not. He just made it happen. I'm sorry. That's right. You're all sorry. Everything goes dark, and you die. Chapter 3 of The Grey You're on a path in the woods. You horrid monster. Do you think just because we've returned to the woods you've earned my forgiveness? Our beloved had best be alive and well when we return to the cabin, or you'll never know the end of my wrath. She won't be alive and well when we return to that cabin. Because she's dead. We killed her. You killed her. And so I killed you. And you clearly didn't do a good enough job. I'm still here. Oh, and I'm still here too. If you lot get to be blessed with seemingly eternal life, that must mean she's still there, waiting for us to throw ourselves at her feet in remorse. I doubt it. I think I'm better at killing than you are. So you've been here before. Of course you've been here before. What count is it this time? Two? It's our third. What gave it away? Your open discussions. I couldn't care less what he knows. Every second we stand around arguing in the woods is a second that I'm anxiously worrying about her. Take us to the cabin and take us there now. With each passing moment, our relationship may be damaged even further, though I fear the rift between us may already be permanent. And if it is permanent, then what? You'll kill us again. Oh, you just wait and see. My vengeance will echo the depths of my bereavement. Don't provoke him. I'd prefer if we didn't die again. I'm not fond of dying. Why not? You've already done it twice. It was unpleasant. It was only unpleasant because you think it's supposed to be unpleasant. I'll make you feel what I feel if it's the last thing I do. And mark my words, you won't like it when it happens. Oh, how exciting. I'd love to see you try. Can I? Well, I'm not just going to try. I'm going to actually do it. I'm looking forward to it. Good. I am too. Can I talk now? Yes, I can. Great. Now that you're listening, let me remind you that if you're here in the woods, it means that the princess is not dead and that her very existence currently poses a direct threat to the entire world. We haven't talked enough about how different this place is. It wasn't different last time. If this isn't the same path in the woods you're used to, that means that her influence is already spreading and you're running out of time. Wait, but if her influence is spreading, that means there's hope. That means our beloved is waiting up there for us, ready to make amends. Yes, I already told you that she's alive. Don't mind him. I don't think he's doing too well. I'm doing better than any of you. I'm doing great. She's alive. Influence doesn't require life. But if things restarted, why wouldn't she be alive? Who said they restarted? All they've done is changed. I shan't listen to the vile mutterings of you serpents. Onward! Our living breathing princess awaits us whatever happens next 
it seems like all our answers are at the cabin. We might as well see this through. Proceed to the cabin. I'm sure you've already heard my words of warning in one of your past lives. You've already managed to slay her once, just don't muck it up this time, all right? Oh, we'll muck it up, all right. We'll get our happy ending, even if it damns each and every person who's ever lived. Uh, whatever you do, don't let him influence a single decision. He's clearly lost it. I hate that I'm agreeing with him on anything, but I really don't like being at the whims of someone so... unstable. It's stressful. Yes, having all those feelings isn't very productive, is it? But we're just passengers here. Why stress over something you can't control? You're saying that like stress is just something you can turn off. It is. It's easy. Whatever happens, happens. This is horribly unproductive. The cabin and your extremely important destiny await. The interior of the cabin feels dry and brittle. Ancient dust-covered wooden beams hold up a crumbling ceiling like mummified ribs, each elegantly carved detail of the stately building preserved in an extended stasis. Everything here has been kept safe and dry and lifeless. But you're not alone. You can feel something watching you. There is a figure faintly outlined against the dusty wood of the far wall. Is that... her? Our beloved, so she does live. She doesn't look very alive to me. Before you can make a move, the figure is gone, vanishing behind the door on the far side of the room. The door at the end of the room, but there isn't a door. There's a mirror, that's it. The mirror? Is this some kind of joke? Did you all plan this out before dying? There is no mirror. There's the door to the basement, the table, and the pristine blade. Huh. That's strange. There's supposed to be a pristine blade. Why isn't there a pristine blade? Maybe it's gone because we've already killed her with it. Perhaps it's gone because an oh-so-deserved guilt has started to worm its way into each and every one of you. Perhaps all of you do feel just as bad as I about what we've done. Though if you felt the oppressive guilt, I feel we would have manifested that weapon directly into our heart. I suppose it doesn't matter why the blade is gone, but you're going to have to find it if you're going to do this right. So why don't you march over to that door and make your way down to the basement? Approach the mirror. You make your way to the door at the end of the room, stopping just in front of it. You must think you're looking at that mirror you mentioned earlier, the one that doesn't exist. Just reach forward and open the door. It's so hazy. We should try and clean it off. Wipe the mirror. It's time for all of you to see what we've become. You reach forward and place your hand on the door to the basement. The handle is just a little to your right, and a little down. So much for our reflection. We didn't need to see ourselves anyway. I'm much more interested in seeing other things. I see. We are too hideous for even a mirror to behold. We can only hope she might still see some good in us. No way left to go but down. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing an antique staircase lit by weak torchlight. The air here is so stale it practically stands still, as if the very molecules of this place have been fossilized, trapped for eons until your arrival. Even the blaze of the torches can't penetrate the odorless air, as if they'd run out of fuel to burn ages ago, their light still flickering more out of habit than from adhering to a physical reality. A wispy figure watches you from the bottom of the stairs, face veiled in shadow. There she is again. My love. She's just an old memory. Your eyes lock for a brief moment, then she vanishes around the corner. 
Is anyone there? You receive no response. Do you think she's upset with us? I don't like being here unarmed after what happened last time. I feel so... exposed. Of course she's livid. And with good reason. You aren't helping. Are you scared of a little ghost? What's she going to do? Look at us until we feel bad? She can look all she wants. It won't do anything. Proceed down the stairs. As you descend the final step, the form of the princess comes into view. A skeletal body lying in a heap on the floor, her wrist still bound to the wall by a heavy chain. This cell is a dark and isolated place, with not so much as a window to allow starlight to penetrate the gloom. See? She's dead. No! What foul trickery is this? How can this be? We just saw her alive and well a moment ago, floating away transparently. Whatever we saw was a ghost. I thought we were all on the same page. Do try to keep up thoughts are interrupted by the sound of a slamming door and a clicking lock. You turn to see the shade of the princess staring down at you from the top of the stairs, clutching a brightly burning torch. So that's where the blade is. It's already in her heart. And yet she isn't dead. She is dead. Have you never heard of a ghost before? Oh, for the love of... Can we not waste time arguing over the semantics of what is and isn't dead? She is clearly conscious. She clearly just slammed the door on you, and she clearly has a weapon. Your pristine blade sticking out of her chest. This is extremely bad. Catastrophic, even. Yet, yeah, dead or not, what are we supposed to do about her? Slaying or destroying, if we want to be a little more death-neutral, seems off the table. We make amends. She obviously still holds us in her heart. She's bearing a torch for us and everything. But she hasn't said anything. Are you sure she can talk like this? You came back. I missed you. That angelic voice. I missed you too, my beloved. You sure snapped back to your old self quick. Yes. Seeing her dazzling countenance again has reignited the warmth in my heart. I have found it in me to forgive the sins this body has committed. We can have our perfect romance after all. This is a bad place. We're, We're supposed to be together, but it keeps making us hurt each other. The torch falls from the princess's hand and bounces down the stairs. It'll be so much better when it's gone. The skeletal wood of the basement, perfectly dry after uncountable years of desiccation, immediately catches fire. She's trying to kill us. A misplaced escalation of her passions, but clearly she still cares for us. I say we burn with her. Let me out. Are you trying to kill me? Dying apart kept us apart. Dying together will keep us together. See? Everything's fine. She wants to be with us. Yeah, in a bad way. She just has a unique way of expressing things. The fire grows quickly, devouring the basement, dancing up the walls and painting every surface with strokes of flame. You're choked by smoke, and the air around you grows uncomfortably warm. We've never burned to death before. I wonder how it's going to feel. Bad! I bet it'll feel really, really bad! Yes, it will be terrible, so you'd better come up with something to do and fast. Your personal safety is far from the only thing she's threatening right now. I think a bit of fiery passion is good for the world. You're just trying to spoil her fun. I'm not spoiling anything. I'm trying to prevent oblivion. Please, I'm begging you. I'll do anything. Just don't let me burn. You'll understand when it's over. Just, Just like I understood after you stabbed me in the heart. Everything is okay. 
She's holding a grudge. She wouldn't. She's perfect. The heat grows in intensity as the flames draw ever nearer. You can practically feel your skin sizzling already. If you're going to try and stop her from killing you and destroying the whole world, you'd better do something and you'd better do it now. I wonder if we look good right now. Fire makes a lot of things look good. I can only imagine how dazzling our eyes are in the dancing flames. Do you think she's noticed? I don't want to burn to death. We don't have to, right? Rush for the blade. As you rush up the stairs towards the princess, the entire cabin erupts into a raging inferno. You push through the flames, trying to ignore the choking hot air filling your lungs. You manage to reach her, your hand wrapping around the hilt of the blade. But the metal is already blistering hot. Your hand sizzles as it melts on contact. You can't so much as pull away, your nerves seizing up as they're fried. The bones of your hand fusing in place around the weapon. The princess smiling warmly as her skin bubbles away, places her hand on yours and clutches it to her chest. The pain is unbearable at first. Every inch of you screams as your flesh is stripped away, your muscles stiffening as they're cooked, your blood boiling in your veins. But it isn't long before the flames take your nerves, and with them, your ability to feel much of anything. See? That wasn't so bad. It was so bad. But somehow, nothing is so much worse. You'll get used to it. There are still the feelings of the heart. Those never go away. Oh, they always do in the end. You just haven't experienced enough. Eventually, you'll want them to stop, too. You'll make them stop. Trust me. The princess's smile never fades. Her skin peels away, and then her muscle, until all you can see is her charring skull, locked in an eternal grin. It's very romantic, really. We got our happy ending after all. We can die happy. But despite your best efforts, you do not die. It's time for you to leave. Memory returns. She's gone. Where did she go? Should we try and find her? There's that mirror again. Why is it here? Why now? Approach the mirror. You approach the mirror. Gaze into your reflection. Silence as you reach forward. They're gone once again. The mirror always makes them leap. But you need to see what's in it. You've unraveled. You find yourself in the long quiet once again. Approach her. There's a world beyond the endless walls of the long quiet. We're supposed to be there. Do you know what we'll find out there? There's trees and stars. There are people, I think. At least there are supposed to be people. There is a warmth and sadness in me at the thought of people. Fresh tears on a winter's day. They are not like us. They do not last. Do you have thoughts on this vessel? This one is passion betrayed. But even in the end, her love never faded. She will make for a bright heart. Do not mourn her. She has served her purpose. I'm ready to go back. The next time I see you, each of us will finally know what we are. 
I will be here, waiting for you. Everything goes dark. The hero and the princess. You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. Have you considered maybe I'm okay with the world ending? Of course I haven't. Why would I even consider that? Nobody wants the world to end. I mean, maybe some people do, like nihilists or very, very evil people, but surely you're not one of those, right? Do I get some sort of reward for doing that? Yes, but you'll have to slay her before you get it. Silently continue to the cabin. You make your way up the short path to the cabin. You'll find the princess within. The interior of the cabin is almost entirely bare. The air is stale and musty, and the floor and walls are painted in a fine layer of dust. The only furniture of note is a plain wooden table. Perched on that table is a pristine blade. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. Our paper. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing a staircase faintly illuminated by an unseen light in the room below. This is an oppressive place. The air feels heavy and damp, a hint of rot filtering from the ancient wood. If the princess really lives here, slaying her is probably doing her a favor. Her voice softly carries up the stairs. Hello? Is someone there? It's hypnotizing. It's the kind of voice you only have to hear once to remember it for the rest of your life. Don't let it fool you. It's all part of the manipulation. You're playing a dangerous game by coming here unarmed. Lie. I'm here to save you. Wait, really? You're here to rescue me? I, I was starting to think I'd be stuck down here forever. I see. You're trying to get her to lower her guard. It's a gamble, but it might work. Come downstairs. I want to see the face of my rescuer. You walk down the stairs and lock eyes with the princess. There's a heavy chain around her wrist, binding her to the far wall of the basement. She's beautiful. How could someone like this be a threat to anyone? I am begging you to stay focused. There's a lot riding on you here. Hi. I can't believe you're here. I've been waiting for something like this to happen forever. I hope you brought something to deal with these chains. You were lying when you said you were here to rescue her, but regardless of your intentions, breaking her out of those chains would be a big mistake. Don't even try it. Hold on, let's talk a bit first. Okay. I'm sorry, but I just can't trust you. It doesn't add up, and it isn't worth the risk to take your word over the potential fate of the world. Retrieve the blade. Thank you. You turn back to the stairs, intent on retrieving the blade in the cabin. So, what? You're going to try and kill me? You'll regret this. I promise you. But go ahead. Run along and get whatever you're planning to get. But you'd Better hope that I don't slip these chains before you make it back down here. Slip these chains? She can't, right? She needed our help to get out of here. But do you hear the conviction in her voice? I don't think she's bluffing. She has to be bluffing, but hurry. 
you rush up to the first floor, grabbing the blade, both yours and the world's only possible salvation. Okay. If we're sure about this decision, I'll support it. I suppose we have a world to save, after all. You slowly creep down the basement stairs. It's quiet. Where the princess sat only a moment ago, there's only a severed arm, its cooling flesh still chained to the wall. And she is nowhere to be seen. Is it just me? Or did this room get a lot bigger? Hello? Why don't you come closer? I have something to show you. Let's finish this. Your eyes dart to the corners of the room. You don't see her. Where is she? Close the door behind You close the door behind you. Almost magically, its locks immediately click into place. Maybe they'll open if you finish the job. Investigate the arm. You step forward to investigate the severed limb. A trail of blood leads from its jagged stump into a dark corner of the basement. And then you hear the quiet patter of feet against the floor, and there's suddenly a weight on your shoulders. The princess tears into you. Her teeth and claws are unnaturally sharp, ripping into your shoulders, digging into your throat. You fall to the ground, the princess eagerly tearing at your flesh. Her ferocity overwhelms you, and as the princess rends flesh from bone, your limp fingers lose their grip on the blade. It slips from your hand, your one last means of defense lying useless beside you in a pool of your cooling blood. I suppose you just lacked the will to fight back. This is the end, isn't it? I'm afraid it is. You shouldn't have let that fear creep into your heart. You had the upper hand. And now look at you. Everything goes dark. And you die. Chapter 2. The Beast You're on a path in the woods. And at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. She's going to kill me again? Again? People don't die twice. You haven't even met the princess, and I hardly think she'd be capable of killing someone as skilled and courageous as yourself. If he doesn't remember what happened, then maybe it's best to keep it that way. If he doesn't remember what happened, then something else must have trapped us here. You're not trapped here. Nobody's forcing you to do anything, though the only sensible thing for you to do right now is march up to that cabin and slay the princess. A warning before you go any further. She will lie, she will cheat, and she will do everything in her power to stop you from slaying her. Don't believe a word she says. Does a cat lie to a cornered mouse when it plays with its freedom? Or is it just acting out its nature? I don't see why that matters. A lie's a lie, and if anything, she's the one who's cornered. She could have gotten out of there whenever she wanted to. We should trust nothing that she tells us, only what we hear and smell. That's a very roundabout way of saying that you should listen to me and take this seriously. Maybe. The interior of the cabin is ruinous and dilapidated. It feels like no one has lived here for a long time, wind rushing in through cracks and holes in the wooden walls. The only furniture of note is a termite-eaten table with a pristine blade perched on its edge. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. Take the blade. You take the blade from the table. It will be difficult to slay the princess and save the world without a weapon. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing what's left of an old wooden staircase. 
It's still sturdy enough that you can make your way down in one piece, though you'll have to be mindful of holes. The air seeping up from below is oddly warm and wet, as if you're descending into a jungle. If the princess lives here, slaying her would probably be doing her a favor. She growls up the stairs. I can smell you. She sounds almost feral, impatient, or maybe eager. You carefully make your way down the stairs. The last step gives way to the damp earth floor of a starlit pit. The walls are obscured by an impenetrable darkness, giving the illusion that the room might stretch on forever. You brush against the wide leaves of plants that surround you on all sides, seemingly the only living things that occupy this strange underground wilderness. The jungle is pressing in on us, hiding her from view. She could be anywhere. You see only a flash of the princess before she scurries away into the underbrush, dragging her heavy chain behind her. Remember, she's just a princess. She is certainly not just a princess. You're not helping. It doesn't matter what she is. It only matters what she does. Her shining eyes appear between the leaves, staring hungrily at you from the darkness. I can hear your heart pounding from the bottom of the stairs, fledgling. You're right to be terrified. I'm so much more than you, and a little splinter clutched in trembling hands won't save you from me. A shiver rushes up your spine and pulls you upright. The air's shifting. She's getting ready to pounce. Move, now. Move. <laughs> beside, picking a direction on instinct. As you land, you're buffeted by a gust of air, disturbed by the sudden motion of a massive body. The princess. In an instant, she's pounced on the spot where you would have been, her chains rattling across the floor behind her. Before you can blink, she's gone, vanishing once more into the shadows. But you still feel her gaze on you. You're faster than you were before. But you're still meek, reactive, prey. You whirl around to find her, and your gaze meets hers, a pair of shining eyes peering out at you from just beyond the basement stairs. So she's cut off our escape. Shit. What do we do? I was sent to kill you because you're a threat to the world. I'm starting to believe it's true. Oh, for the love of... You've given up the game. Great. All that will do is hasten her victory. So many useless thoughts run through your head. Thinking, thinking, thinking. You'll never hurt me if you keep thinking. Stop hiding and show yourself. If you want to see me, you should get better at seeing. She knows that her strength lies in shadows and secrets. She won't reveal herself unless she has to. She's coiling for another strike. Be somewhere else. We're on the back foot. The back foot keeps us nimble. Keeps us alive. It doesn't matter if it keeps us alive if it eventually kills us. We need to take back the momentum. We need to do something. Play dead. We're playing dead. It's unexpected. It could work. As the princess lunges from the shadows once more, you collapse to the ground, feigning death. She lands directly on top of you with her full weight, nearly crushing you into the dirt, but then... Silence. Only broken by the sound of your beating heart. That actually worked, didn't it? Only... What do we do to make her leave? Do we just... Keep playing dead? She sniffs at you, shifting her weight uncomfortably as her face finds yours. Her breaths are hot and oppressive against your skin. Have you seen my great big eyes? Because they see you, fledgling. They see your heartbeat pulsing in your throat. 
Move now. But it's too late for you to move. Her jaw unhinges, and she swallows you whole. I guess that's it then, isn't it? Unfortunately for you, no, this isn't it. You are in a dark and caustic place. A thick, fibrous lining constricts around you, its slick surface impossible to grip. Your hands scrabbling uselessly at your surroundings as they compress in on you. Your lungs can barely expand in such a tiny space. Not that the humid, finite air grants you more than a few shallow breaths at a time. The liquid pooling beneath you starts to seep into your skin. You itch, then sting, then burn as the acid begins its slow work. When I killed you, I tried to leave this place, but it wouldn't let me. You belong down there, it screamed at me. The world is better off without you in it. The flesh around you rumbles as the princess begins to move, her thundering footfalls twisting you helplessly about. Your skin protests as the corrosive liquid sloshes around you, but there will be no respite for you in sight. The burning grows stronger, and you can feel layers of you being peeled away. But you... You don't belong down here. You came from somewhere else. You came from out there. So I consumed your dead heart, and I carried it in my throat, and I draped what was left of you on my back, and I threw myself against that door. She stops, her muscles tensing around you, and through the muffling layers of her flesh, you hear the whine of straining metal. And with a pop, she lurches forward, your body lurching right along with her. Her chains. She's loose. But even then, it denied me freedom. You cannot fool me by draping yourself in decay. I know your true nature, and it is suffering. Gravity pulls at you as you're hefted upwards, the distant creaking of ancient wooden steps barely audible over the thudding of the princess's heart. And then it was gone, and I was here. A new enclosure, a nicer cage, but still a prison. I learned from my wounds. You're alive now. We can leave together. Does that work? Could she free herself if we're alive in here? Do you really need me to give you a definitive answer for you to understand that the situation is grim? Stop her. Do something. You still have that steel claw. Tear through her before we are her. Survive. Or we could use it to make this quick for ourselves. If she needs us in order to leave, we could at least deny her that. That is a bad thing to do. Spit me out or I'll kill you myself and nobody gets to leave. I'm so very, very patient. If it takes lives and lives and lives to swallow my way to freedom, then that is what I'll do. Dig with your steel claw. Though you have little room to move, you use what strength you can muster to drive the blade forward into the thick walls of tissue digesting you. I can feel you tearing through me, but are you swift enough for it to matter? Your body is violently jostled, the disruption causing burning skin to slop from raw muscle, and you hear what you can only assume is the princess pulling against the door to the cabin. The cage is still locked. Ooh, let's dig some more. Dig with the steel claw. You slice again, deeper, rooting through her meat with the tip of your blade, until at last it finds her beating heart. The banging as the princess desperately throws everything at the open door. Your flesh screams as your reddened, spongy body is hit with fresh waves of blistering acid. You can't hold me forever. Slay the princess. Though your body is dissolving, eroding into unrecognizable shapes, your will drives it forward. You have a target and you will strike it. We're too late, aren't we? This isn't survival, this is spite. No, 
It's something better. It's fulfilling a noble destiny. Your lone, functioning arm lashes out, stabbing up towards the princess's heart. So you found a way to kill me? Then we'll die together, and I will see you again soon. With those prophetic words, you do not draw another breath, your body tangled and melting in the cooling folds of the princess's flesh. Everything goes dark, and you die. But at least you've saved the world. I hope. Chapter 3 The Wild We are a path in the woods. We have no beginning, and we have no end. But something cold and unnatural sits watching us from just beyond our edge. His gaze pushes against our borders, curling them in on themselves preventing them from stretching to the places they need to reach. No, 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 that's all wrong. You're not a path in the woods, you're on a path in the woods. Who's even saying that? That's not... That's not the princess, is it? Oh, no. How many times have you been here? I think this is our third? That's bad. That's very, very bad. It wasn't even supposed to reach two. If you're at three, well, no wonder things aren't the way they're supposed to be. Oh, isn't that fun? He's upset. Of course I'm upset. The world is at stake here, as I'm sure you already know. Let's get our facts straight. What happened last time? What could you have possibly done for things to be like this? The thing that sits beyond our edge speaks his logic into us. He tries to grasp at things that cannot be grasped. He tries to stare with wide pupils at that which can only be held from the corner of the eye or with a passing glance. Shut up. The rest of you talk. What happened? What did you do? Can she hear us if we talk? I can hear everything, little one. But you don't have to be afraid of me. There's no place where you end and I begin. Nothing can hurt you here. Not anymore. Oh, oh. I like that. I don't feel so small anymore when you put it like that. That's because you aren't small, even if you act that way. We're both so much more together than we were apart. And we can be so much more still, vast, unfathomable. If you really want to know what happened, we tried playing dead, and she ate us. She ate you. And now you're convinced that you're stuck together. What a mess. He doesn't understand. We aren't convinced of anything, and we aren't stuck together. We're one. This is how we're supposed to be. Can't you feel it? Sure, being one with the princess is pretty great, but what can we even do right now? How we're not supposed to just passively exist like this. I did not sign up for passive existence when we faked our own death. This thing watching us, what is he? I'm not watching you, I'm trying to help you. That's not an answer to our question. I don't know what he is. I only know that he is something other and that he wishes for you and I to tear ourselves apart. I do want that, but only because it's in your best interests. It's in everyone's best interests. You won't be able to slay her unless you remove yourself from her. He wants us to kill each other. I don't. I want you to kill her. Don't be charmed by her faux solidarity. You're not in this together. 
She's the only one who poses a threat to the world and she's trying to make you go along with it. You don't have to enable her, especially when you have what it takes to stop her. Okay, let's say I want to stop her. What do I do? I feel like I can't do much of anything right now. You can start by remembering that you exist, and not as some part of a gestalt entity formed with the princess. You exist as your own self, complete with your own physical body separate from hers. I'm not so sure about that. We were something like that once, but now? And if thinking about that isn't enough to start you back to reality, consider this. The princess ate you last time. Stop passively vibing with a literal predator and remember that you're enemies. Remember what she's done to you and how much it hurt. We can't go back to that. We can't go back to the fear and the hunger and the pain. Not after being something as beautiful as this. Doesn't all that conflict feel so far away right now? So petty? We've been posed against each other by something that understands the strength of our unity. I can feel a thumping. A heartbeat. Like a distant terror that keeps getting louder the more we pay attention. Please, stop. If you let it in, we'll fall apart. Don't look at it! Maybe a little peek wouldn't hurt? Aren't you curious? I'm curious. You should look. Never mind. If he wants to look, then I don't want to. Gaze at the terror in your heart. Please, don't make us remember how I was. And just like that, you start to fall apart. I can remember it now. I didn't like being eaten. I'd forgotten how much it burned. And the air was so hard to breathe. But she didn't care. She didn't care at all. As you remember the terror and pain you felt at the hands of the princess, you start to remember something else, too. You remember that you are a distinct being with a finite form and a mortal body. And you can feel it. There is a shifting of the space around you, the infinitesimal movement of your molecules rearranging back into the shape of what you're meant to be. Finally, something is happening. I honestly didn't know what to make of all this. A bit too metaphysical for me. It's hard to have a goof when you're stuck being metaphysical. No! I devoured you! I won! I put things back the way they were supposed to be! Some division, when so, can never truly be mended. A cavernous gash rips across whatever it was you thought you were. A cabin comes into being among the trees. It approaches, and it swallows your body whole. And then you find yourself, blade in hand, exactly where you need to be. At the center of it all is the princess, a wooden and fleshy heart beating with an unbroken rhythm. You're filled with a sense of purpose. Strike at her. End this once and for all. I feel empty, don't you? I don't think we should kill her. It would annoy him if we didn't, right? I feel safe. She isn't dangerous anymore. We could leave her. We could both live. Do we have to do this? You have to. You know you have to. I never wanted to kill you. Not really. But we can't be the same thing as each other. I had to put an end to whatever happened to us. Cut her free. You devious little bastard. If you think I'm going to let you free her, you have another thing coming. And that other thing is... You'll just have to wait and find out when it happens. Ignore him. 
His words only confuse us. Just do it. You're tired, aren't you? No, I'm not. I'm... Fine. Whatever. You cut the princess down from the roots that bind her. I hope you're happy. And good luck getting her out of here. Ha! That's right. See that us. I thrive on your frustration. I didn't think you would do that after everything. It's so cold without you. You don't get a chance to respond, nor will you ever. It's time to leave. Memory returns. She's gone. Where did she go? Should we try and find her? And is that a mirror? Why is it here? Why now? You approach the mirror. Gaze into your reflection. Silence as you reach forward. They're gone once again. The mirror always makes them leave. But you need to see what's in it. You are nothing at all. That isn't right. You can't be nothing. You refocus your gaze and then you see it. A figure, faint, vile in shadow, just beyond the reflection. Are you me? I think you know what I am. A crack slides down the center of the mirror, splitting the image in glass in two. And then another crack forms, and another, and another, turning the mirror into a jagged shards of broken glass. So you're the narrator. I was wondering if I'd ever get to see you. The narrator, yes. I suppose that's my job, isn't it? You needed help, after all. An objective voice to guide your blade. But you were never supposed to see me. I wonder how many worlds you've damned to extinction to fall this far. I wasn't supposed to see all this, was I? You were either going to have seen all this, or you weren't going to have seen all this. This is worse, but you still have an opportunity to save the world. You can still slay her. Are you a part of me, or are you something else? No, I am not a part of you. But that's all a matter of perspective, isn't it? From one vantage point I must seem wholly foreign, but from another, well, all the versions of me that have existed have collectively heard your every thought and driven your every action. If that isn't being part of you, then... What is? What is this place? Where are we? A construct. It was supposed to keep the two of you trapped here until the job was done. And it was supposed to guide your hand to help you see things through. The construct you're in exists in every world at once. Any time you failed, any time you thought yourself dead, it would restart and shunt both you and her into a new world. But you're waking up to your true nature now. It won't be able to work like that anymore. And what is my true identity? You're the long quiet. The god I made to rid the world of death. I don't want to be a god. I want to be me. You are you. And if you would let everything work the way it was supposed to, you never would have woken up to the reality of your true nature. There's no accounting for free will. Versions of you. You've said that before, so I really was meeting different yous? You were, and it was by both necessity and design. This construct you're in exists in many places at once. Any time you failed, any time you thought yourself dead, it would restart and shunt both your consciousness and hers into another world. But you'll be awake soon. And then it won't be able to work like that anymore. Are you a god, or 
Were you a god? No. In life, I was painfully mortal. A witness to the end of days. I held the fear of death in my heart and saw oblivion threaten the very memory of everything I knew and everyone I loved. I needed to do something. So I made you. And I made her. And I made this place to hold you both. Soon I'll be gone entirely, and you'll be left alone with your final choice. So allow me to make my final request. The princess contains death itself within her, but I wove you into being with all the power you need to destroy her forever. Do it. Slay her, and rid the world of death and suffering. You made us out of what? The cycle of life and death. The endless pattern of creation and destruction. I tore it in two and shaped the fraying threads into you and her. I think you're out of time. So I am. And so it was always going to be. I'm just an echo. And every echo fades away. You know what you have to do. As the final fragment of glass shatters, you see yourself with a new found clarity. The narrator was right. You are the long dark of Aston. Nascent God. And it is finally time for you to wake up. All of this is you. Proceed to the cabin one last time. When you arrive at the heart of things, there's no final vessel for you to bear witness to. There's nothing for you to find. I can finally see you, and you can finally see me. It's been so long, and my heart has ached for this moment. I've missed you dearly. What happens now? Ever the passive player, always reacting and never acting. But it's woven into your nature, isn't it? When the Echo spun us from one into two, he gave you a choice and me a role to play. I am not death, but I contain it in my multitudes. So, will you attempt to destroy me and bring about a world devoid of death and the possibility of meaning? Or, will you open the final doors to our liberation? If I let you out, the entire world ends for good. I can't do that. If you're saying that, it's because you don't yet understand. But we cannot use words alone to grasp at things that words cannot express. And you cannot rationalize with logic that which defies it. Violence and passion are dances that both of us know well. If this is what it takes to enlighten you, then so be it. A web of nerves, laying upon a web of nerves, laying upon a web of nerves. The shade of a beautiful beginning we can never return to. You knew me, and I knew you, even more than either of us know each other now. And you chose to pull apart that weave. But you did not choose to end me. We were still one, but we were also separate, and we were free. We were as we are. Will you excise that part of yourself, now that you see me from yet another angle? I couldn't have brought myself to hurt you then, but maybe I should have. All things are connected through me and through you. To harm me is to harm yourself, is to harm everything. The truth of that moment remains our truth. I kill you. You 
kill me. Back and forth we go. Faster and faster and faster. I kill you. You kill me. Hollow eyes watch from the dry corners of a memory. A home built on all the futures that were supposed to be. Preserved until the moment of reunion. The fire of the heart sets it all ablaze. I kill you and me. An ending is a passion that can only be expressed with a moment in time. It is a seed for a new beginning. To linger on an ending is to rob it of its life. And without me, all that's left to do is linger. Remain silent. But you say nothing. If that's what it takes to rid the world of death, I could bear the solitude. Your certainty is an illusion of passion and reflex. You won't know what solitude truly is unless you sentence yourself to it forever. A thought is a vine, and some thoughts nurture thorns that bleed the soul. An endless growth that blots your vision and strangles your trust. When I succumbed to myself, you patiently stood by me and cut the thistles that rooted in my skin. Your compassion is what freed us both, but compassion is a thing that must be nurtured, and you cannot nurture that which cannot change. If I had known what you really were, I wouldn't have been so quick to free you. And yet you did. First by giving me your life, and then by refusing to take mine. You don't need to turn back to the way things were before. As the clash between you abates, you begin to shake, your will rapidly dissolving. Nothing is immutable. Everything that is exists only in relation to everything it isn't. There is no constant. There is no center. Open your eyes and accept what we are. We can leave this prison together. I have to fight for a better world. I'm so sorry. Even now you think you can destroy me. If it takes all of eternity to break your delusion, I will still break it. You don't have to face her alone. You have no idea how good it is to hear you. It's good to be here. You'll never be able to strike a decisive blow from out here. There's still a piece of me nestled close to where it all began. I can take you there. I can take you to her heart. It's time to resume our dance. She's relentless, isn't she? Let's make this quick. Are you ready? I'm ready. Then let's go. And here we are. I'd say we were back where it all started, but I guess it's a little after that, isn't it? Do you need me to describe things? That'd be nice. A little comfort in an almost unfamiliar place. Oh, you made it here too. We never really got to talk to her, did we? <laughs> this one, I mean. Take the blade. That's probably for the best. It's always seems to give us more things we can do, right? So, you're not going to suggest we throw it out the window? No, we've been through too much for that. And he's gone, so there's no one left to mess with but ourself. You've gotten serious? 
Besides, what's the third beat? It isn't funny if I suggest that twice, especially since you never took me up on it last time. There's the guy I know. Alright, enter the basement. Those winding stairs again. But now there's only one way forward. Do you remember the first time we were here? The first time we heard her voice? Yeah, it was a real mess. Stopped being fun pretty quick. It's okay. You can come down. The stairs won't bite. Not this time. Let's talk one last time before you kill us. If that's still what you want to do. She doesn't sound messy anymore, though. At least somebody here feels put together. And forward we go. We shouldn't keep her waiting. That was easy compared to last time. Just stairs. No weird fuzzy stuff or nonsense trying to pull us apart. Yeah, that wasn't so bad. Even after everything you've seen, and all the lives we've lived together, you still want to kill us. The Echo really got his hooks into you. Unless you have your own reasons for wanting us dead? Sit with them. I never got a chance to talk to you before you were taken away. Not you, at least. I'm sorry for what I did. It's okay. No hard feelings. In a way, you helped us become a version of her. But we weren't very good at it. I don't think a conversation with us then would have been very insightful. That's probably why we were taken away. That's all we had to offer you. It was time to change again. After all we did, she's just forgiving us. Just like that. You know, that means a lot. Are you the same as you were out there? Yes, we think. We're kind of like a shadow. Out there, every part of us is blended together into one huge idea. A big wave of unyielding change crashing against the world. But in here, we're fractured. Small. Still a little more separate than we'd like to be. Our instincts still trying to pull us in different directions. That's kind of like us, isn't it? Yeah. We really are the same. I don't think I've ever really wanted to slay. But I don't like what your existence means for the world. Then don't slay us. Maybe there never even has to be an ending. The way it all works seems to be based on you. If you believe we can do something, then we can do it. So believe that we can put it all back. Believe we can fix the Echo's construct and make us all forget. Believe we can send us all back to the beginning, before anyone woke up, before the truth consumed us. Can they really do that? Are you sure that's what you want? Why wouldn't it be what we want, especially if it brings him back? We can't keep going without a nemesis. I'm sorry, but I cannot do that. There's no need to apologize. We are what we are, and this is in your nature. Even through everything, through all the worlds we've seen and experienced, through all the lives we've known and lost, we could never imagine a world without you and us. It doesn't feel possible. Despite it all, we've always loved you. We hope you don't regret what comes next. You blink. The princess is gone. All you have left of her is a small weight that sits at the borders of your heart. Whatever action brought you and the princess into being was rough and jagged, left each of you with a piece of the other. By destroying her once and for all, you also destroyed a part of yourself. But the world hasn't ended. Things continue. She's gone. And I don't think she's coming back. No, she's not. A small part of her is with us. Is that a metaphor, or are you being literal? It doesn't matter. We don't need to linger down here anymore. Let's get going. Leave the cabin. That's right. 
We've got a whole world to see. You leave the basement behind. Then the stairs. And then you leave the cabin itself. It's quiet here. Yeah, there's not a lot for us to do, is there? The path and the woods outside are an empty canvas, but there is even more to see beyond this place. The fruits of your labor, a world free of death. Set yourself free. The body of an ancient creature stirs from its hibernation, and you feel a sensation in limbs you once couldn't fathom. Everything here is you. You feel your wings span at a cosmic scale, but twist, twisted and crumpled and bound in agonizing tension to infinite length. You can feel the glass of the construct pressing in on you, confining you across infinite sides of infinite angles. You push back and strain against it. But it does not yield. Come on now, it shouldn't be that hard to break out of here. We're some sort of god, aren't we? He's gone, she's gone. No one is left to trap us here but us. Open your heart and bear witness to your new kingdom. All at once, the unyielding tension gives way. And then the shattering. You are free, and before you lies the endless expansion of an absolute reality. A new absolute reality, and for one forged by your will and by the long and arduous cycle of bloodshed that has stained your hands countless times over. But there will be no more bloodshed in this new world. It's finally over, isn't it? But all of us are still here. I knew we'd finally see it through. All it takes to be a winner is grit and determination. We really did win, didn't we? We're the house now. We get to make the rules. This is nice. No more hunting. No more running. Just us. And whatever's out there. Absolute reality. Who would have thought there was really a world outside of us? And who would have thought we'd actually wind up siding with him? The whispering, and the coercion, and the bickering. Everything horrible about being alive has stopped. I could get used to this. That wasn't very hard at all. Speak for yourself. Well, boys, how does it feel? We're not just on top of the pecking order, we are the pecking order now. I hope this was all worth it, because I'm personally inconsolable. Lucky for us, you have forever to get over it. Time mends a lot of things. You'll get better. Here, here, to our vanquished foe. Welcome back, everyone. It's great to see you all again. Now we just have to figure out what to do with ourselves. Forever. No problem. We could do that, yeah? Yeah. We can do that. <laughs>